Welcome to it. It is the Real Red Reaction Show here on KFOR and streaming online at KFOR Facebook and Twitter, as well as the Hail Varsity YouTube page and the Real Red Reaction YouTube page. It's Elijah Herbal alongside Tim Bob Fitzmiller and Chris Schmidt, who joins us in downtown Lincoln as Nebraska falls by a final score of 13 to 10. They are walked off by the Maryland Terrapins in the game. You had every opportunity to win, even late turnovers big issue for Nebraska. Five turnovers, including a key of a pretty interception in the red zone with a chance to take the lead. Maryland takes advantage. They, they knock home the walk off. Guys, there's not much to say about that one. It's, it's heartbreaking. Nebraska had every opportunity to win. They let it to their last and you have two games left to reach full eligibility. Elijah, it is a uh, tough one making my way here down 10th Street. And a uh, slow walk, right? Kind of a procession by Nebraska fans. And still two more chances to get six. That's the good news if you're a Nebraska fan. The bad news, I mean, this is this is a, a gettable game, just like last week for Nebraska. And five turnovers, you you nailed it. Uh, it looked it looked bright with, with Chuba coming in right after, I mean, what a game by Buda, right? Got the key interception in that third quarter. Hustling, forces the fumble inside the five. Nebraska recovers, goes on a march, and it stalls out third and goal from the seven. And either a wrong route was run or uh, just a, a misread by the quarterback. It's A or B. But let's go to C here. And C stands for carry, as in running back carry. <laughs> do, do you uh, do you hand off Tim Bob? Yeah. Do, you, do, you, settle, do, do you settle? Do you settle? first and goal. You, 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 know, set, you got do, three down. Do you settle for run three, brother? Ugh. Just run the ball, kick the field goal. Your defense has played their tail ends off. They got you the turnovers you wanted, right? We've been saying all along this defense didn't get turned. They got three turnovers today. They forced a couple of big turnovers to prevent a touchdown and and you you throw the ball you put the quarterback a third string quarterback down on the goal line and make him make a choice on an option route run the ball three times and kick the field goal and and, and then let your defense go win it i mean that's that's option 3 that's play calling that's knowing where you're at on the field and and if if you know that rule i, I agree with there's a comment down there. Rule deserves a little heat for this one. If he's the guy, he needs to say, no, we're running the ball. Even if we don't score, we're taking the points and winning this ball game. I mean, goodness gracious, every quarterback you've got thrown in an interception. And, and and you're just – I mean, that that's – you talked about – he talked about during the week. Got to be sure that you put the players in position and don't make them – have to make those choices. You'll be a better play caller to help them win. That's a key point where he, whoever made that call to make that throw for, for Chuba, and believe me, I was at a tail guard. All of us are cheering, Chuba, 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 high five! And I mean, this is this is a miracle coming off the bench. This is, you know, this is uh, going back to what um, uh, Herman, right? Or, Truman coming off the bench and winning back in the 90s, right? The third string quarterback. And and I think it comes down to play calling and, and just not managing the end of that game when you've just had a brutal day of turnover. That's my rant. I'll, I'll probably have another, but that's where I'm coming from. So, Tim Bob, don't disagree. Uh, bad things happen to Nebraska football when they go back to throw. And the old saying is, you drop back to, to pass, two, two of the three are, are, are bad results, interception or incompletion. And Nebraska right now just can't get out of their own way with their turnovers. Sims came in and moved the offense a little bit, but then turnovers reared up, especially that strip. I mean, just hold on to the football. The interceptions were just awful. But the second half, the defense 
let's focus on them for a second, man. They they found a way to get this team back in it. Seven felt like 70. Right. When you're down if you're Nebraska. And you get consecutive turnovers in consecutive possessions. And you score 10 points off the turnovers. You're up. You turn away Maryland. Eventually, a, another interception leads to three. So you're tied at 10. And then you'd seen enough of Sims. You go to Chaba, and he dry, drives him down. Emmett almost busted that off yeah, for a Emmett touchdown run. Great game. Gosh, Emmett. But Johnson. Nebraska ran it, shoot, uh, close to 40 times for about 190. It was 40 times for 183 yards. Okay. So the run game was there. It, it's a it's a one-two thing for me. Guys, Satterfield, uh, Satterfield does not want to run the football as a priority. Guys, we go to the phone lines where Bob has been patiently hanging on. Bob, welcome into the Real Red Reaction Show. Go ahead. Well, as happy as, happy as I was, as I called you last time, Chris, I am gut punched. I, and it's, I know this is totally ridiculous to say, and I expect to be torn to pieces, but, I, but it almost seems like this team doesn't want to go to a bowl. And I know that isn't so, but it, it's just, and you know, the defense, could, you couldn't have asked a better job of the defense, in my opinion. But to do what they I don't know. I, 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 I'm sitting here. I, I'm, I feel like I could break out in tears in many moments. And I've been a Huskers fan since 1962. Bob, there, there's a, a lot of crying that's going to go on with this one. Um, you have enough opportunity to make it happen. You, you feel for the defense because Maryland did go 12 plays, 75 yards for the walk-off field goal. You needed to stop. And Elijah and Tim Bob, Nebraska, was not good on third down today. They weren't good on third and long. And they missed some key tackles to nitpick. They were incredible today. But they, they've got to be perfect, it feels like. And when they weren't perfect, that's what burned them. It's not their fault, though. Yeah. Well, they got the turnovers they needed. Sure. Bob, thanks for the phone call today. Bob, appreciate okay. it. Let's call the show 402 489 1240. That's 402 489 1240. Get us your reaction to Nebraska. And Maryland, let's quickly take you through the final stats because we've alluded to that a little bit here in this show already. Nebraska, 269 total yards compared to Maryland's 384. That's 86 yards through the air for Nebraska uh, with four interceptions, 183 yards on the ground, 4.6 yards per rush. One penalty for 15 yards for Nebraska, 31 minutes and one second, the time of possession. As for Maryland, 384 total yards. They were 6 of 12 on third down, 283 yards through the air. A little to a Talia was 200, excuse me, 27 of 40, uh, along with 101 yards on the ground for Maryland. Nearly all of those coming in the second half. 10 penalties for 92 yards for the Terrapins. Three turnovers. And the stat that stands out, the stat that's an anomaly, the stat that I don't know if is, is, uh, is able to be replicated by many other teams in the country, Three different quarterbacks throwing interceptions for Nebraska today. That is something that is just astounding. I, But it's not surprising, given what we've seen from Nebraska and the quarterback play this year. That's what's so shocking to me about this is you see four interceptions, three of them coming from different quarterbacks, and you go, that's par for the course. I, I, I was watching the game at home with my roommate, Darren, and I turned to him when Chuba came in the football game after he picked up a couple first downs, and I said, you know how this drive's going to end, right? Chubba's going to throw an interception. And they make it down inside the 10-yard the line. Maybe I was the jinx. I don't know. But I thought, you know what? Maybe I was wrong. Maybe Chubba is showing us something today that we haven't seen from him in his entire Husker career. Lo and behold, a stupid decision. I think the play call was terrible, first off. You're inside yeah. the 10-yard line. Running the football is what's gotten you there today. It's, what's, what, it's how you're making your hay. And you decide to throw the ball three, uh, third down, nine yards to go inside the 10-yard line. And what happens, it's either 
too much on it for Malachi. You lead him by too much or it's way behind Billy Kemp. You kind of leave it in between the two guys. It's an easy interception for Maryland. And you sit back and you go, well, I should have seen that coming. Yeah. And, and it's uh, I say it comes down to coaching and play calling, right? I mean, there's several people in the chat saying the same thing. You've got the ball inside the team. Your defense is, has played, you know, up against the wall all day and they've gotten turnovers. They've gotten you the ball back, kick the, Play for the field goal, right? Play for the field goal. Your defense is, has, you know, has really kept you in the game, keeping them out of the end zone. Kick the ball. You know, I mean, don't don't be. <laughs> I, I was going to say what my what my coach used to tell me, you know, <laughs> but I don't think I can say that on the air. But you know, don't. I I, I can dump it out of the broadcast. You can say anything you want online. I just have to dump it out of the broadcast. Yeah, but. You know, take what's there. Don't don't try to get greedy, right? Kick the ball. It's a Big Ten football. You've said that all week. The Big Ten football comes down to one possession. Got to be able to, you know, convert and, and take the field goals when they're there. I mean, you said one thing and you did another one. I think there is some coaches heat for this uh, that has to come uh, from, from just either somebody made the bad call. As you said, you know Chubb's tendencies, right? Why would you put him in that situation? You've got a field goal kicker. You're inside the 10. Kick the damn ball. Sorry. Totally agree with you. And th there's a fine line as I'm settled here at the single barrel. Real Red Reaction, 489-1240. Get in. We'll get to your comments on the stream yard as well as we're streaming live. KFOR Facebook, Twitter. Hail Varsity, YouTube, and the Real Red Reaction YouTube channel. It's a fine line, right? You don't want to play scared. You don't want to play timid. You don't want to show your guys on offense that you're, you're gun shy with them. That said, you've just got to be smart. you got to know your personnel, and you have to sometimes save them from themselves. Somebody needs to come in and save Nebraska's play caller from himself because, and listen, I don't, I don't know what's, what's right here with the, the answer because the guy watches practice. Presumably the guy is going to try and do what makes his offense, his quarterback comfortable and, and call and rep what they can do while sprinkling in. All right, here's where a defense is vulnerable. And it just comes down to, to decision-making uh, by your quarterbacks that that's out of, the offensive coordinator's hands, okay? Now, you play the guy that's going to make the best decisions for you, but but none of the guys have made good decisions at all. I mean, you go to Sims because Harburg's hurt, and reluctantly you go to Pretty because you've not seen him all year, and Pretty goes in and performs, and then Pretty does what at least he's done in a small sample size. It'll look good for a while, and then here's here's the turnover. But don't ask him to throw it. Don't ask him to throw that route. It's third down and seven from the seven, yet you have points in front of you. Uh, seven would be nice with Maryland's offense. I get it. You want the touchdown, but but do something that's, um, that's to your point, Elijah, that has the least amount of risk. You go uh, at fourth and two, Nebraska's stopped uh, on, a, on a long drive that Sims came in and kind of kicked some rust off and – and, and then there's a play call to the short side of the field that, that didn't work on a quarterback counter. You didn't put it in the air. I get it. But uh, you just need better – it, it's a horrible combination. Bad execution, terrible judgment, and and – and stubbornness with wanting to throw the football or not trusting the run a lot. Well, I said it in our, our pregame show, Schmitty. I said today, Nebraska's offense, it's going to be a game where it's windy. Maryland might struggle to throw the football just a little bit. They're going to get their chunk plays, but you got to trust in your defense. And the adjustment that you have to make is you have to take a, a page out of Iowa's playbook and say, you know what? On third and long, we're going to run the football and understand three points is more valuable than zero or punting and pinning Maryland deep on their half of the field is better than giving them the ball at midfield. And time and time again, Marcus Satterfield, who it should be noted is making $1.3 million a year to make these decisions is deciding, you know what? We're going to throw the ball in third and nine in the red zone, understanding that three points might be insurmountable for Maryland based on how the defense has been playing. He needs or, to give half of that. After, to, after, to, after, to, Jeff Sims, 
after Jeff Sims fumbles the football, you throw him back out there, and on first and ten, you're throwing the football. Why? This is a guy that has showed you all season long that he's a head case, and when something goes wrong for him, he's going to let something else go wrong. He's going to make a poor decision. He's going to force the issue, and he's going to do something stupid on the football field. You're a guy who's making $1.3 million a year, and I understand you have dollar store ingredients in that offense right now. You've gone down to the dollar store, and you have your minute steak. You have some freeze-dried onions or something. But Mark, and they were on deal. sale. They were on sale. They are cheap. That's okay. That's some flat iron but Marcus Satterfield is trying to make freaking beef Wellington with these dollar store ingredients. That's not what your offense is. Run the damn ball, risk aversion with your offense, and understand that the defense is the side of the football that is making your money this year. You're making $1.3 million a year to make these decisions, to be smarter than the people who are sitting at home at their armchair saying, ah, throw the football. You need to get some yards. You're supposed to be earning that salary. And right now, Marcus Satterfield is not earning that salary. I'm not on team fire Marcus Satterfield. He's a lost cause just yet because he does have dollar store ingredients. But it concerns me that a guy with dollar store ingredients is trying to make beef Wellington with the offense when sometimes a grilled cheese is all you need. He, he needs supervision with his game plan. He needs supervision in game with what he's calling. And you saw this in South Carolina. Uh, where some play calling duties were taken away. Uh, there are times, and, and it's easy to go armchair here. I'm not calling for his head or for his job. I'm calling for more hands-on approach by his head coach moving forward. Uh, you need to be able to throw the football. Nebraska made some completions, and we had Matthew's comment up there. He thinks Sat needs to go. Uh, at first, Matthew thought he just needs more tools. However, he clearly can't make adjustments to what he has. You have a, a young receiving core that we've seen step up in past games. There's still some inexperience and inconsistency in these moments. 489-1240 will take more of your phone calls here on Real Red Reaction. Joel checks in as well on the stream. Can watch the show here on the Hale Varsity YouTube channel and the Real Red Reaction YouTube channel. Chris Schmidt, Tim Bob Kitzmiller, Elijah Herbal. As uh, Joel checks in, Satterfield is showing why he's deficient in play calling. His playmakers are not capable of doing what he wants, yet he's forcing them in the situation that requires them to do so. And he's he's a pro-style pass-first guy. You've got dual-threat quarterbacks, and they're limited, at least based on what's been called, with uh, with the eye back run game or the play call there, I don't believe that Emmett Johnson continues to to get lathered up and thrive. Um, th- there needs to be more emphasis on the run. And ten of the first fifteen plays, as bad as that started for Nebraska, they were pass calls. And I know third and medium and third and long are passing downs, but Nebraska really here needs these next two games against stud defenses to figure something out. The defense wasn't perfect. The defense was uh, doing their best Superman tribute, however, with uh, getting the turnovers that they had to get. They they tried to serve that up on a platter for Nebraska's offense. And you, did the, the chair got pulled out from under you again, Nebraska fans, and I'm sad for you and sick for you because, I mean, it's a, it's a fairy tale. You're marching 97 yards, Elijah. You're marching 97 yards. You get a stop defensively on fourth and one after a seven and a half minute, 15 play drive for Maryland after a, another turnover, and and the def- you get a, a another turnover here, uh, for two of them from Buda Wright, and then uh, another fumble recovery uh, inside the five. It, it it's magical what this defense did to try and will a win today, but third down and in, in nine or more was problematic today. I think Maryland was 50% on third down. Uh, there was some, some, some splash plays that, you know, Maryland was going to get, but some of the tackling was, was problematic today. And that's, that's a dude making a play for Maryland. And a lot of times Nebraska uh, just getting gashed uh, when it, when it came down to crunch time on that final drive, that was 12 plays, 75 yards after the interception, after the 19 yard return. I just, uh, you know, a side note, Hutmacher and Ty Robinson just played some 
game. I mean, they game today. They made some plays, you know, at the line of scrimmage, the, the recovery, uh, you know, one hut marker on that fourth and one, you know, just stones his man and makes the tackle at the, you know, at the, I mean, they really played, you know, I thought that front seven or the, the front three, th- front four, whatever they did, played tremendously today. I mean, you got to give them credit, you know, talking about the defense. I realize, you know, the the offense, you know, let us down again, which is just – but, gosh, there's some defensive plays along the front that were just game changers, should have been game winners. And then that's what's got to be so frustrating. You know, it's, it's a replay of, of what we saw last year down the stretch, right? Defense plays well enough to win. Offense turns the ball over, can't – can't execute. I don't know where you go from here now. You've seen all three quarterbacks, and, and all three of them have showed up deficient. I mean, they've all three shown up unable to do either what the quarterback called or what the game called for. Uh, and, and and Jeff Sims is just uh, literally his his mo is to fumble the football. He knows that going in. Why wouldn't you? I mean, he, he either can't or won't change his behavior. Right. I mean, I, some of this does come back to the to the players. Um, but again, got to give hats off to, to Hutmiker and, and Ty Robinson for just playing a well of a game. I wanted to point that out before we, you know, I know it's all negative, but those guys played lights out. Tim, Bob, you ask where the offense goes from here. I'd recommend church tomorrow morning where you can get in a lot of prayer. But before church, you go to the bar. <laughs> Let's, uh, let's hit the phone lines again where Will's been hanging on patiently. Will, like, welcome into the Real Red Reaction Show. Go ahead. Yeah, am I on? Yeah, you're on the air. You are. You are. Okay. Um, wow. Uh, not happy. Um, I'm going to put this blame on Rule. He, uh, he knows what he has in quarterback Sims. I have no idea why he put him back after that, after his first turnover. That was that was a problem. Uh, bad interception, bad two interceptions, worse fumble, where you're trying to make a play on on a quarterback uh, counter, Will, and instead of covering up and just taking the loss, uh, you you make it worse. I mean, he gets ripped like a rag doll, and uh, and then the, the bigger problem in my mind is the fact that Marcus Satterfield turns and on the very next offensive play from scrimmage throws says, the football. We're going to put the ball in Jeff Sims' hands and not just throw the football. We're going to throw the football somewhat deep, a 25-yard out route. That's the other problem. They, they're calling too many passes downfield, fellas. And I know they've got the the what what the young wideouts do is is get downfield because they're fast. But you can you can. Um, dip and dunk to, to your tight ends or your H backs or your running backs for five yards. Let them get three or four after the catch. And it's second and three. Nebraska goes downfield too much based on what their execution level is. Well, you got anything this else for is, us? Y- yeah, this is uh, I've liked the rule for the most part, uh, but this is the second major uh, mistake, I guess. Uh, his first one was not to keep Casey Thompson at court at, at Nebraska instead of getting Sims. Mm-hmm. Uh, I know that's a long time ago, but man, if we could have, I don't know. It's just, it's tough to think about that. Well, thanks, well, thanks for listening. Appreciate you calling. 489-1240, Real Red Reaction here for you. We'll get to more of your StreamYard comments, more of your phone calls. But yeah, you have every right to be hot after this one, Nebraska fans. And this is this is coaching. Well, what, what's the old sign in every coach's office? You're either uh, teaching it or allowing it to happen. And Nebraska's allowing really bad decision making to continue to happen on the defense, on the offensive side of the football. And I know you're a you're a unit, you're a team, but you got to be real sick and tired of this if you're the the defense right now. Uh, you're not perfect, but yet you have to go out there and almost play perfectly every every ball game and that second half was just tremendous work uh for for the defense aside from some of the third downs well, four eight nine twelve forty why'd you go for but i think i'm frozen here we can hear you we can uh, see you you're, you're a little pixel, okay we good. can still see you the thing is is we talked about it pregame. i even talked about it at halftime nebraska today either they had to win the turnover battle 
or they had to win the explosive play battle. We saw on the field with how that offense was performing, they weren't going to win the explosive play battle. I think there was two explosive plays off the top of my head I can think of. The Emmett Johnson run, and what am I? There was a pass play, wasn't there? Uh, I guess you can call the Borkature fake punt an explosive play. Nebraska did not have explosive plays, so you had to go win the turnover battle. And the defense did everything they could in the second half to get that turnover battle a win for you. And if your offense just doesn't turn the football over, you go punt the ball when you're third and nine from the nine yard line late in the game, you hand the ball off, you don't turn it over, you kick the field goal. If you can do those things, Nebraska wins the freaking football game. I just don't understand why the offense hasn't become more akin to Iowa where you say, you know what? The best thing we can do offensively is not move the ball. It's avert risk. If you just avert risk with your offense today, you win that football game. It's as simple as that. And I can't believe there's a guy making $1.3 million who can't figure that out. The other part of this is, um, and we'll get to some of your stream comments, more your phone calls, 489-1240. Uh, Elijah checks in and uh, reiterates that there needs to be uh, help with the OC. I need any OC help. He's putting out an SOS, Tim Bob. Uh, there, There is that. Sean says Rule needs some heat on this. Uh, Andy says absolutely brutal. Jeff hits the nail on the head here, Tim Bob. Uh, you turn it over five times, you're going to lose the game or you deserve to lose the game. And while you force some of your own turnovers to get back there, you're still uh, you're still out. And the other part of this too, Tim Bob, is I know Elijah's got a call coming in. Is you held this offense <laughs> to 13, and all right. 13 were 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 off of <laughs> were off of, of off of your turnovers. Twice they drove pretty far against your defense. Uh, defense looked a, a little tired, and, and they missed some tackles, but they, they did yeoman work, don't get me wrong. Three times, three, three times inside the Maryland 30, you turn the football over. Three yes. times. And that is that is criminal. It is criminal. It, 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 again, you want to put a collar on? That's fine. That's fine. Go ahead. I said we go to Santos, who's been hanging patiently on the line. Santos, you're on a three-road reaction show. Go ahead. Hey guys, love, love the show. Thank you so much. So, uh, quick question. So, you know, we have had, we've seen this before, right? So the same dance over and over. Um, you know, the, the big problem that we have is how did we actually miss this bad of a quarterback play for the last, you know, six to seven months? You know, we talked about the offensive coordinator making $1.3 million. Is this time for us to change that position? Uh, because, you know, we cannot be one-dimensional. We might win six to seven games every year. But if we don't have passing offense, we're not going to win the big games at all. So what are we missing here? Uh, thank you, guys. I'll hang up and listen. Santos, thanks well, again for checking in. <laughs> I mean, what are we missing here, right? I mean, is, is it is it play calling? Is it execution? Is it learning how to win? Is it is it losing teams figure out how to lose? I mean, at this point, it's become creative on Nebraska going back. You know, you know, it was, it was a little bit of a you know a bad joke last year, but at this point, you're going this this is just a question of is it coaching? Is it players? Is it just a culture that can't figure out how to win? I mean, that's that's a you know a million dollar question. And we saw, like I said, we saw all three quarterbacks today, and all three of them, you know, uh, turned the ball over, right, uh, in different ways. Now, I don't. I thought running the ball, like like Elijah said. I mean, on that final drive, you ran the ball. Emmett Johnson about took it to the house. You are, you've taken the momentum back. You've you swung the field. You're right down there. To me, that's play calling. But throughout the game. There's many a place where the play play calling, you know, the quarterback's got to not throw that ball, right? I mean, listen, guys, I was not a great quarterback, right? But I always knew you could throw it in the stands, right? If it's not there, take the check down. The band director's always open. Throw it up in the cheap seats, right? I mean, that that is just fundamental football. 
right? And, 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 it, it's, the, and what it's crazy to I, me. Again, I threw my fair share of interceptions. Don't get me wrong, <laughs> right? I, I, I took me a long time to figure out how to read a two-deep secondary. But at the same time, my coaches knew what my weaknesses were and didn't call plays that put me in a situation. And again, I'm not comparing myself to these guys. I'm just talking about fundamentals of going, know what your players can do and, and don't try to, you know, stick a square peg in a round hole. You're inside the three yard. I kicked the field goal. I'm sorry. Keep well, going. No, you're, you're good. What's brutal you're, you're, is the fact you're good. that, that Chubba Purdy on first down in goal makes a great play, honestly. It's a designed run play. There's nobody out running a route. He gets outside the tackle box and throws it away. And I sat there and went, that might be the smartest thing I've seen a quarterback for Nebraska do all season long. He throws the ball away on a play that there is no receiver running a route. It's a designed running play. And then two plays later, he turns around and throws an interception because he's not smart enough to tuck it and run on third and goal whenever the play isn't there. And I think he had Malachi Coleman open about the three yard line, either he missed him or he missed Billy Kent badly. Regardless, it's a terrible throw. And that, that great play he makes on first down, he makes an even worse play on third down and gives Maryland decent field position and a chance to go win the football game. And it's as simple as this back to Santos's call. I think right or wrong, as bad as Marcus Satterfield's been this year, I think he's going to be back next year because it's so difficult to judge an offensive coordinator whenever he doesn't have a quarterback that is playing up to snuff. And right now, Marcus Satterfield doesn't have that. I think there's a lot of criticism that needs to be heaped onto Marcus Satterfield because he's been part of the problem. The quarterback's very much, though, been part of the problem as well. And I think it's harsh to judge Satterfield and say he needs to be fired whenever he doesn't have a quarterback because right now, Nebraska's got three quarterbacks on the roster. And it's not bold to say. I'm going to make the prediction right now, and I don't think it's out there. I think it's pretty much none of them are back. Point. None of them are going to at least be playing quarterback for Nebraska next year. I think two of them are probably in the portal. I think one of them is probably going to be playing tight end next year in Heinrich Harburg. None of them are going to be playing quarterback next year. So I think you're probably going to give Satterfield one more year to judge him. But he's been a big part of the problem with this offense, too. And that's a fair take, Elijah. Real Red Reaction, 489-1240. To Santos's question, I agree with Elijah. I think Satterfield is back. What he has makes his job real difficult. Uh, the injury situation makes his job real difficult. The offensive line, what what you believe they are able to do in the run game makes it real difficult. I think they thought they'd be better at being able to line up and, and, and use RB1. Uh, I I don't need to see any more Sims. I don't need to see any more Anthony Grant. He spends too much time uh, east and west and not enough north, south, uh, and that, that can stymie some of the run. I mean, I need I need most of my carries to go to Emmett Johnson or Fleeks moving forward in this run game. Um, Nebraska needs to be uh, true to what they, they talk anyway, and that's committed to the run. Uh, and uh, at times they went to it, but they didn't stick with it enough, in in my humble opinion. Uh, from a decision-making standpoint, you have to, to be able to preach and trust. And at that point, Nebraska had to throw somebody else out there at quarterback. They were on <laughs> door number three today at quarterback. And, and part of the reason maybe you haven't seen Chubba early or this season is because of his decision-making and who's taking care of the football. You don't have anybody that can take care of the football. Uh, maybe you go to Wildcat these last two games uh, when it gets to be inside the red zone and uh, go from there. But let's go to the touchdown. I mean, it's third and third and goal, and you're running a, a, an H-back reverse because I got to show off my brain. Uh, idiotic. And you were lucky to get that edge seal blocked to get into the end zone. Uh, the other part of it is, is Satterfield wants to call what he wants to call, and that that needs to be tempered. And I know we're we're into game uh, number ten already at five and five now, but there there needs to be some supervision with the play calling moving forward. And if you want to be a rushing football team in the fourth quarter, you're not throwing the football on third down inside the 10 and, and i was taking and and, and 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 if you are throwing it it's it's a real safe and easy dump off where you but, make a guy miss and and you make and you make a play after the catch where you can't throw an interception in the end zone 
I would have taken the the H back sweep play on third and and goal as opposed to the the pass we threw. I mean, I would have taken that play if you could have set it up. I mean, anything but putting that ball in the air. All right, uh, that just to me makes no sense. You're you're in field goal range, right? There's no need. I mean, you don't need a touchdown to win this game. Your defense has played well enough. You kicked that field goal. The momentum has come. You just drove the ball 97 yards. You tell me the defense isn't going to rush out there with a with an enthusiasm to shut that down? I mean, you could tell that last drive. They're a little bit like, man, what do we got to do? I mean, it's human nature. You can see it. What do we got to do? We we've got you three turnovers. We we've done everything we can, and you still put us in this situation. I mean, it's your your young men with with emotions, and if you kick that field goal, you go up three. I think the defense rushes out there and, and plays lights out and shuts them down. And to Elijah's point, I think Satterfield needs to give about half of his uh, or Satterfield needs to give half of his money to Tony White and and call it good. It's been problematic this season to have complementary football, to have the defense help the offense, the offense help the opposing offense uh, with not taking care of the football. And it's been an absolute nightmare for Nebraska today in a game that that looked and felt like, all right, how's this going to (laughs) go? Because you're down seven, nothing. That middle eight did not go well for Nebraska. But Maryland came out and five plays, two turnovers, and it was uh, it was an issue for for Maryland. And then Nebraska was able to take the lead, but they could not hold the lead. As uh, Bill Dolman's uh, jumping in with us here on the post game, we'll hear from Matt Rule in a little bit. Real Red Reaction four eight nine twelve forty. Want to join in? We'll get to more of your Streamyard comments as well, Hale Varsity YouTube or the Real Red Reaction YouTube, KFOR Facebook, KFOR Twitter, and the Hale Varsity Radio Twitter feed is where you can check in. Elijah, did we have someone on the horn? I'm sorry. I'm a couple seconds or two behind you. Nope. No one on the line. All right. So an open phone line. If you want to get in, we'll get the, the link sent off to, to Billy D. And that number, 402-489-1240. Again, at 402 402- Four eight nine twelve forty. Give us a call. Give us your thoughts. Uncensored. You can say what you want. I've got my finger over the well, delay button here. To don't a point. don't in, don't, don't encourage encourage, yeah. encourage that, uh, please. <laughs> I'm gonna keep working here. Real but, for a um, reason. Um, you have uh, Daddy check it in. Satterfield needs to be gone now. Uh, if Rule was calling the plays, why is Satterfield even on staff? It was disgusting to watch. The defense didn't deserve that. Chris checks in and says it was Scott Frost tackling today. Didn't wrap up. Um, wow. We'll, we'll leave the last part of that comment off the uh, <clears throat> the uh, the screen. Uh, female Casey Royals fan says Sims cost us three. Chubba cost us uh, potential seven. Uh, I would say it's it's three. Uh, and then Ryan checks in. Seriously, at this point, if we are anywhere close to the 25, just kick the bleeping field goal. Don't even risk it. Should have 19 points right now. Quarterback room needs to be cleaned out and start over. Uh, Rock Westfall, he's been a longtime listener. He checks in. All I have to do is retire from Nebraska football, and my life will instantly and infinitely improve. Absolute inhumane cruelty. <laughs> Another Elijah says uh, we're all masochists, apparently, because we keep coming back for more. Yeah. Bill will get a link sent to your email here. Elijah, if you could do that, we'll get him on camera. Uh, secondly, um, Bill, a thought from you while we have your, your audio right now on, on what you saw. You and I looked at each other after the 37th interception on the day. <laughs> Um, I, I think I wrote down before the final drive, just don't turn the ball over and, uh, keep the ball on the ground. I, I, I looked to you and said, just, just maintain possession of the football, run the clock down, get the lead. And sure enough, uh, Minnesota all over again, 
throwing the football in the end zone into a crowd. Um, you know, what Rule had to say didn't fully give. I, I didn't think gave a – he didn't give a, a great explanation for it. He said the guy made a great play on it. Uh, no, fans will hear no, that in a moment. Terrible. But uh, I'm not exactly sure it was a great play by the defensive back on the catch. Uh, I'm Look, I've been watching Nebraska football for – better than 55 years now uh, and save except for the last 20. Okay. Because there's too many to count. That was the worst play call that I can remember Nebraska football making. I just, I can't for the life of me think, why did you throw the ball? If you run the ball, because he it, wants to throw the ball, right? Exactly. If it, you know, if, 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 if you run the ball on third down and you don't make it, You've now taken 40 seconds off the clock, right? And you've got it inside three minutes remaining in the game. And in all likelihood, you're up by three. Now, the, the uh, Nebraska's defense allowed them to go down the field. The only penalty committed by Nebraska on the day was the pass interference. Uh, and I think that was somewhat questionable given what we saw not be called pass interference last week. But to me, the, the pass play at Minnesota – after they knew what should have been a touchdown and you throw the ball when you had the ball an inch away from the goal line. And today when you've got all the momentum and you don't put the, you run the ball on that third. I, it's to me, it's inexcusable there. There are 1.4 million reasons why to question um, a lot of decisions today, especially on that one. And Doug Jones chimes in on the stream. Maybe we need a new quarterback coach. That's what's funny. That's what's funny. There isn't a quarterback coach. Well, the the OC is the quarterback's coach. And, uh, yeah, it's – you're not working with you, – you put it perfectly, Elijah, dollar store ingredients. Uh, and there's Bill's uh, stream. Thanks for that. So Colin checks in, our resident, South Bend resident. The drive with Chubba was perfect until we get inside the 10 and call a pass play on first down and then another one on third down. And a third stringer and uh, with a third stringer and st instead of sticking with the run that was dominating that drive, I would have liked to have seen a couple more cracks by number 21 carrying the football or at least give the defense a headache with a zone read look that you called on that zone read keep was big time to get that 13-yard uh, gain to get out of the shadow of your own, go own goal line, 489-1240. 489-1240 here with Real Red Reaction. Uh, phone lines are open for you, more of your comments. And uh, there's not a lot of grace right now for uh, the offensive coordinator or the quarterbacks. And it's just a, a bad tug of war with bad decision making at that position and then a play caller that is hell bent on still trying to throw the football. Yeah, why that call was made, and, and uh, you, people will hear uh, Matt Rule, that the first down was not a pass play. Uh, that was a called run. Purdy kept it and ran out of the pocket and was able to bail out of the play by throwing it away. Unfortunately, Fedoni was deemed to be um, in the area, so that wasn't intentional grounding. But first down was a run, and Purdy kept it and ended up having to throw it. Second down was a run, didn't get RPO. close. Yeah. And uh, well, he said he wasn't even an RPO. It was a run play. Uh, people will hear that and sort of hear an explanation for it. Um, I, I, I'm mystified about the third down, especially given what transpired at the beginning of the season in Minnesota. You have the field goal you, you know, to, there. Just run the ball. If you don't make it, just make sure it's between the pipes. And Avano comes on and kicks the field goal probably with 2.30 to go in the game. But you throw the ball into traffic. It wasn't a great play that, that I can remember seeing by the defensive back. Poorly thrown. And uh, it's really disappointing. That was no good uh, as I'm having a little bit of a spin. There we go. I think I'm back. So uh, we'll get to more comments here. Uh, Kevin. Uh, checks in, Greg is in, and also Mike. We'll get to all of your comments. Keep them coming here on the StreamYard, the Hail Varsity YouTube channel, the Real Red Reaction YouTube channel. Either way, you can check us out. Watch the show. Hear us on 
KFOR, KFORnow.com, KFOR Facebook, KFOR Twitter, and the Hale Varsity Radio Twitter feed as uh, we're here for as long as you want to be. We've got another about 45 minutes on the radio side of things, Elijah, and then uh, more when it comes to, to, to digital and, and streaming only. Do we need to take a timeout and, and then maybe hear some rule? Do we want to reset that way? At some point, we need to take a break, but if we're in no rush. I am awaiting uh, our good friend JP from Kicks has the uh, the rural audio as well as some of the players. I am awaiting getting that in my email inbox. So we are still awaiting the Matt Rule uh, presser as uh, JP's having some internet connectivity issues down at Memorial Stadium. So we're waiting on that so we can keep it rolling. We can take a break. Whatever we want to do, we have that ability. All right, I, 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 I'm, I'm seeing... Oh, go ahead. Go ahead, Tim, Bob. I want to go to, to Bill's comment that, you know, that the first play wasn't a pass play, so Trevor made that call or missed, missed the play or whatever. And second was a run. You know, maybe, I mean, maybe we don't know what's going on. Maybe it was Chubba's decision-making and not Satterfield. I mean, it's, it's a, either way, it's a bonehead call. But you know, that, that makes me question a little bit if the first play was a run play and Chubba pulls it and turns it into a pass play, that's a player thing. That That's that's not a Satterfield thing. There may be more to this, and maybe I'm reading between the lines, but that makes me question the the player as much as the play caller. And that, maybe that's a, just me, but I go, why would why would you change that play uh, as a player if unless you just screwed up and you missed the handoff, right? I don't know. It, 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 that was an interesting comment you made, Bill. It, it was a uh, yeah. it was it was a zone. Re- there wasn't a, a wide receiver from my replay that we saw in the uh, the Peacock feed, which was terrible all day. Just to let you know, why do they need to take three and a half minute long commercial breaks during the game every two minutes whenever there's no commercials? One of life's great mysteries. I don't know. That was brutal to watch. But secondly, there wasn't a wide receiver that went out on a route that play. I think that was Chuba not trying to take a seven yard loss. He's taking the zone reader on the outside, finds a host of defenders and says, the smart football player is to throw this football away because I'm outside the pocket. I actually think I tipped the cap to Chubb on that one, despite the fact that it stops the clock. It kept you within striking distance, keeps it an easier field goal. The big problem is the third down play, wherever you're trying to force it into traffic. It's a bad throw first off. I don't know if he's leading Malachi too much, if he's throwing it behind Billy Kemp, if he just kind of left it somewhere between the two. Regardless, it goes right to a Maryland defender. And you have to know in that moment, if it's not a guy that's wide open, you're nine yards out. That's a long to, to go situation in a, a goal line set whenever it's third and goal. Nine yards is a long way. You have to understand if it's not there, you're going to tuck it and run. You're going to run some clock and you're going to give your field goal kicker the chance to give you the lead. That That is the boneheaded play from, from Chubba Purdy. And I don't think you as a play caller, Marcus Satterfield, should be putting the third string quarterback in that position regardless. But chubba has got to be better too. The the and, and folks are going to hear it, uh, Tim Bob. I from what I gathered, listening to Matt Rule on first down, it was a run play. I think he was trying to avoid what he saw as he was trying to hand the ball off was a potential for a a two yard loss or significant. And he ended up running out and realized I'm in trouble. So it, his instinct was to throw it away and I think sell it that it was a pass play. You're right. There was no there was no receiver downfield. He was fortunate that Fedoni was in the neighborhood. Therefore, there was no uh, in- intentional grounding on it. But I think what his initial thought was, if I hand the ball off, we're going to lose two yards. So he kept it, thought he could get around the end, and that wasn't going to happen. And It was going to be a seven or more yard loss. And then he dumps it, and they it's just an incomplete pass. So that was the thinking on that one. Um, but the third down, uh, that was into traffic and uh, – I, to me, it's inexcusable, but I, I see a uh, Segathon we, we saying – Tim Bob mad. <laughs> <laughs> he's just, oh, he's, he's – he's, we, we really made him I got me fired up, and I'm sweating. I had to get the cool air moving. Sorry. <laughs> he was going to go stone cold there and grab a couple of beers and smash him, you know. But uh, I see Segathon, uh, our hockey guy, people overreacting to Satterfield. You'll love him next year when he has his players. Hey, look, I agree with that. He he does not have the what the team that he had at the beginning of the year with Jeff Sims being more than serviceable as a starting quarterback, right? Uh, and Heinrich Harburg as an H-back tight end, right? And the starting offensive line attack and Gabe Urban and Ramir Johnson. I get all that. And 
Garcia Castaneda and Xavier Bass and all of that. Every, I think everybody understands that. But the call on third down, that at Minnesota was awful. And this call today on third down, that doesn't matter who, that's even more so. Recognize what you have. And, and Purdy threw one pass, or the completed pass on that drive. They had all the momentum in the world. Just run a play that if you pick up a yard or no yards, you are still in position to kick a 22-yard field goal, 25 at worst, 40 seconds off the clock. That has nothing to do with who, who's hurt, who's not there, full complement of players, Spencer Rattler, whatever. It's, in it's, that situation, run the ball and run the clock and kick the field goal. You're up 13-10. to 10. No, Nebraska has uh, an identity crisis with – what they want to be versus what they are. And when a push comes to shove, they want to throw the football. So I want to get into Josh's comment here about criticizing the defense. Were we criticizing listen, the defense? I, that's exactly where I want to go. I'm not saying, listen, they weren't perfect. They missed some tackles today. They got lit up on some third down and longs. It, it happens. They, they were great. They did everything in their power except score today. They were they were fantastic, but there were two drives they needed stops on. All right, you're up 10 to 7. Don't get a stop. Maryland goes down and scores. And I know that there were turnovers. Okay, I, I know there were turnovers that, that put him in awful positions and they 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 helped get out alive. They, they only allowed minimal damage uh, based on all those turnovers, right? I mean, it could have been a 35 spot if he goes seven points off of every turnover Nebraska committed. They got the football back for Nebraska, and they got the football in a short field to get that go-ahead field goal. I'm not criticizing the defense. I'm saying there was two drives that I know Tony White's going to hone in on tomorrow. I know there's some missed tackles Tony White's going to hone in on tomorrow. And I know there's some missed sacks, especially on on, on – Little Tali is a 22-yard scramble. Uh, but, no, they, they played their ass off. They played a great football game. But they have, they, got three turnovers. they have to be perfect for this football team to win, even though during the week, well, don't play like you have to be perfect. They didn't, and they, they did everything in their power. They need the game ball. They deserve a tip of the cap. They're incredible. There's a, they're the reason Nebraska is still – bowl eligible possibly here with with winning one of their next two football games this is on the offense this is on decision making a quarterback and this is on doing what you want to do versus what you can do and and marcus satterfield has not fully grasped at this point 10 games in now what his offense can do he wants to continue to dial up plays with what he thinks the offense can do or what he thinks he's comfortable seeing in practice they must be incredible throwing the football in practice as many times as pass plays are called i know there needs to be balance and this isn't the 94 pipeline where you can line up tell the guy where the play is going and still get nine but nebraska had success on the ground they had it rolling you did have a pass pass play called it was completed the lloyd for a chunk play you found kemp for another big play so clearly chubb has got some arm talent but it needs to be first second and third choice run the football and especially with your when you're in grass but taking the lead after you force a fumble uh inside the five to get the football back god that's just criminal to to do it and then defense couldn't couldn't get a block on that field goal as time expired. They got uh, picked off on that uh, thirty-one uh, that that pass interference penalty, and then there was a, a big third down again on that final drive that uh, they couldn't get a stop here. A third and ten, you had the DPI. A third and one, they get two yards, and uh, that second down and six, the twenty-two yard gain. So. Just a nightmare finish for Nebraska. And, and that, they that's, still have that's a not chance. anything against the defense, though. Let's make that clear. That's what Maryland no. is offensively. If you give Maryland that many opportunities, that many possessions, that many free possessions, Maryland gets chunk plays. Maryland gets explosive plays. They have playmakers on the outside. They have probably the best quarterback in the Big Ten from a pure passing perspective in Tonga Vailoa. I am not going to put the blame on the defense for no, any way we're not doing that. this game. We're not doing that. 
uh, Shuck in Iowa has a bottle of bourbon for us, um, and he is not going to uncork it until Nebraska goes bowling. Will I be able to pop maybe that? Maybe, that maybe a two-year-old bottle of whiskey at this point. <laughs> <laughs> I, don't, I don't know. Uh, the, you know, it might be fitting to 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 dream for a moment, fellas. Here, real red reaction four eight nine twelve forty. As big a pain in the ass as Wisconsin has been to Nebraska in the Big Ten, it would be super rewarding to to go get that sixth win in Madison next week. I don't know how you do it after the last two weeks of um, emotional losses. But you got to get up off the mat. You have Black Friday. You have Iowa. Uh, it's deja vu with this series and this final game. Possibly if if you're at five and six and you need one more to get bowl eligible, you ruin their party to go to Indy last year by winning uh, as a three win football team. They would love nothing more than to possibly send Captain Kirk out with a win and keeping Nebraska from going to the postseason as they blow kisses on a last-second field goal. But uh, as, as bad as the interception was on third down, let's look forward to what you have right now. What's Harburg's availability? Don't care. I would like to see Chuba get a start and have a game plan developed around him. We saw just a handful of plays. We just saw one series. We saw a bad third down pass and decision and play call, but you saw some good things and you saw him move that offense 88 yards, 88 yards, and it should have been a score. It could have been the well, game winning score at 13 to 10. The problem, Schmidt, is that you said, oh, let's see each other further. Let's have them design a game plan around him. Marcus Satterfield is either unwilling or unable to design a game plan around his quarterback. <laughs> He can't do it for Heinrich Carver. He can't do it for Jeff Sims. He continuously thrusts them into situations that they are not comfortable in. Why would you say, oh, put put Chubba Purdy in and say, let's design a game plan around him? That's not how Marcus Satterfield that, operates. That, Marcus that, that Satterfield that, has his offense, and he calls his offense in a way that says, you know what? This is how college football in 2023 works. On third and nine, you throw the ball and hopes to get a touchdown. Yes, that works for a lot of other schools in the country. But based on what Nebraska has offensively right now, it doesn't work for Nebraska. Marcus Satterfield does then not. Then you take that responsibility pick. from him, and you, Matt Rule, put the plan together for Wisconsin. You, Matt Rule, put the plan together for Iowa. If you take that responsibility away from him, you just fire him. And I don't think Matt Rule is going to fire a guy in year one. And that, that's, no, you that, that's the dilemma. You can step in. You can you can hand out a timeout. Clearly, the Big Ten said so today. Well, then what's the point of having a coach that you're paying $1.3 million if he's not going to be your hire, It's your hire. It's your responsibility. It's your hire. It's your responsibility. And ultimately, your job's to win football games. And if the guy you made a mistake on or the quarterback you picked and made a mistake on ain't getting it done, you don't stick to your guns when you're out of ammo. You eventually move on and either try and find a new weapon or you take responsibility and accountability, which I think he's done a good job of for the most part of this program, and you handle it yourself. Either Marcus you, you Satterfield make, calls the plays and designs the game plans the rest of the year, or he's fired on Monday. There's no in-between. Well, but, I mean, isn't that what happened in South Carolina? No, you can remove play calling duties. You, what was that, you, Tim Bob? People do that all the time. Isn't that what we've heard happened in South Carolina? Sutterfield lost his play calling duties and, and the head coach took over some of that. I mean, isn't that what happened in South Carolina? At least that's what we've heard. So, yes, you know, that that's not out of the realm of possibility that you go, maybe he's just not capable. Right. And again, your job is your job is to get six. Well, then if you can't trust your, your offensive coordinator to make the game plan and to call the plays, you have a glorified quarterbacks coach that has shown this year that he can't coach Who cares? You deal with it in the offseason. Just go get six, and for right now, you figure out a Band-Aid. So what's the point of keeping him around, though, if you're going to figure it out in the offseason? Because there is probably some value when it comes to scouting and uh, part of this game plan. You just don't let him make the decision on what to call. I haven't seen anything. You don't, you don't want to be in a situation like the neighbors to the west you know, with uh, what they've done to Sean Lewis and giving the play calling duties over to Shermer and the way that was all done. I don't think 
I don't think Matt Rule wants to make it look like he's following and, and doing what, you know, what Deion Sanders did at Colorado and the and the strange things that people have said about it. They're, they're always going to fall back on, you know, the, the injuries and justifiably so the injuries that this offense has suffered. Right. I get that. But there are things that I'm going back. I'll, I'm going to hammer this until the, the, the coffin's in the grave. <laughs> The, you know, you are at Nebraska, right? And people know, people recognize it. I've said it for 20 years in sports talk radio. Nebraska people understand good and bad football. And you can't just, I'm not saying this is what they're doing, getting up there and saying, well, you know, it, people at Pittsburgh understand the process better than Nebraskans do. You know, the people, well, you don't know why we understand why we went through the ball on third down and goal. Yeah, we do. And we also understand why you don't. And we understand the personnel you have on the field. We understand the context of the game, what's on the clock, and where we are, and what's been happening. People around here get it, and they're smart enough. No, not, not everybody around here is an offensive coordinator. Yeah, that's not the case. But you understand good football. And good football dictates in George Darlington's 101 class at Southeast Community College and also at a church in Omaha, I think. You don't throw the ball in that situation with three minutes to go in the game. I don't care who's hurt. And that just is a glaring thing that Nebraska people understand, you know, and that's why people are upset. Yeah, we don't know the under, – people never understood the complexities of why are we running a short side option? Why, why are we doing – Tom Osborne, why are you doing that? Oh, I get it. You're, you're, you're breaking it down on that side. You bust the big play on the outside. You run the trap up the middle. And next thing you know, you got 600 yards rushing on the ground, and everything worked by the end of the game. You know, people people can understand it, but this is football 101, and that's an that's an F to me. Dolman for OC has started to get some steam here uh, this, uh, with the uh, with the stream yard guys, comments. A couple of housekeeping things here. One. We have Matt Rule's audio. We can get that after a commercial break. We also need to get to that. But before of all of that, we have John. He's been patiently waiting on the phone lines here for almost 10 minutes. So we go to John on the phone lines. John, welcome into Real Red Reaction. Go ahead. All right. Um, I'm in my pretty close to 80. And my point is we flushed down enough money down the toilet since we got rid of Frank Sullich. Get rid of the offensive coordinator. Make an example of him. I'm tired of Nebraska being the retirement uh, school for all these coaches to go clip their coupons. I am very disappointed with our head coach. I don't want to see this offensive coordinator calling plays and get rid of him and bring somebody in that can not pay him a million plus. And everybody I've talked to today thinks Nebraska's coaching stinks. And that's all I have to say. And thank you very much. Thanks, John. John, thanks for the phone call. Uh, Segatron, NHL 95. That was a good game. Satterfield is a good coach. First year for crying out loud. Okay, uh, and, and but on third down with three minutes to go in the game, he's not a good run the ball. ball. And, and this is the run problem. Run the ball. This is the problem. I believe Marcus Satterfield can be a good offense coordinator at Nebraska, but he doesn't have the pieces to run the type of offense that he tries to run on a week out, week in, week out basis. And if you don't have the pieces to run your offense and you continue to try to run that offense in a year where your defense is ahead of schedule and you can get to a bowl game, that makes you a bad football coach. You have to design your offense for the pieces that you have. And I have seen it nothing this season that shows me that Marcus Satterfield has crafted his offense for the players that he has. No, absolutely. Uh, nail and head mesh point. <laughs> a thousand percent and he's not going anywhere no, by the he, way. no he, he's not no, going he, anywhere. he's not going anywhere but again you can absolutely put a leash on him well just a point run out, the ball on third down and goal dick jones yeah. says uh northwestern's up 21 three over wisconsin so you know wisconsin is has got their problems as well so we can look ahead no, no say, worries no worries hey and and, and real quick as bad as that third down and goal call was at Minnesota and again today, the best call by Nebraska's offense so far this season was a belly option pass for 
what, 53 yards and a touchdown a couple of games ago. And who made that call? Tom Osborne. Tom Osborne. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, well, uh, what's he doing? Well, <laughs> so, you know, Matt, you wanna, might want to think about that fullback trap on third and goal. So here, here's, here's, how it's, here's how it's looking, just if, if things hold true. Nebraska is going to have to shake off five turnovers, back-to-back kick-in-the-junk losses. By three points. By three points. Go on the road to the House of Horrors named uh, Mad- Madison, all right? And then, oh, yeah, keep Wisconsin from losing a fourth straight. Because right now they're losing to Northwestern. They lost at Indiana. They got boat raced by Ohio State. They somehow beat Illinois. Otherwise, they'd be in a four-game losing streak. That's just th- – those are awful odds. Everyone's got well at least the last two ball games against Nebraska. Guys, let's, let's go to the phone lines once again. Is that okay? As Karen's been hanging on. Yep. Karen, thanks for listening. Thanks for calling. Welcome into Real Red Reaction. Well, thank you for taking my call. I have a couple of comments and then a question. Uh, I agree trying to throw the ball that close to the end of the game was not a good idea because they've had so many problems with interceptions. Um, I think that was a foolish call. Um, The other thing is if they had just gone for the field goal, there would have been enough time for Maryland to get the ball back. And um, look what happened after the interception. They took the ball and ran right straight down to the other end to make a field goal, and then they won the game. Um, are we sure that if we had just made a, a, t- a field or a, a, a field goal, would have we been able to stop Maryland from going clear down there and getting a touchdown and still win? You um, never know. You never know, Karen. But at least you would have had the lead to your point about not throwing it. You run it. Maybe you get in. Maybe. Uh, Maybe you're stopped, but at least you get a mm-hmm. chance to take take the lead, right? And about a minute l- less left on the clock. So they got to go hurry up, and uh, they still went 12 plays, 75 yards for the game winner. That was no fun, but at least you would have th- technically or theoretically had the lead uh, oh. and not the interception. I have a question. Uh, I'd like to have a clarification. I don't remember who it was that made the statement here. Um, if you are – in the red zone, and that close to the end of the game, and a field goal will win, why bother trying to go for a touchdown? Just go for a field goal. Uh, Are you saying that uh, from now on out we should never try for a touchdown? If we get within the red zone, we should uh, instantly go for a field goal and hope that that's enough to win. No, that was a, a comment, Karen. Thanks for calling. Appreciate it. Four eight nine twelve forty. Um, no, that was a that was a joking comment made in the stream yard on our on our video stream and in, in in reference to the amount of, of red zone interceptions Nebraska has thrown this year. So, but it, it was not a, a bad joke, idea. But, but in hindsight, <laughs> <laughs> you might just kneel on it and kick it. <laughs> But inside the inside the, the five in that situation, had they ran the ball and not gotten the touchdown, the the clock probably would have been around two thirty, two forty five, I believe. You pin your ears back and go nuts. Right, and you're up by you're up thirteen to ten then, and now you put a different kind of pressure on on Maryland to do whatever they can. They they were going to play for the field goal, and and even though they were playing also for a game winning field goal, it's just a different mindset. You got a less, you got a less, a, a, a minute less on the clock, and there's a little more pressure because you are behind. The way they were playing down the stretch, it was tight. So no matter what they did, they're probably either going into overtime or getting in position for a game-winning field goal. Hey, well, hey, I'll take. I mean, I did say kick the field goal, but my point was, you kick the field goal, you have the lead. The defense comes out with a different mindset, right? The totally. defense comes out there with, we've got the win. It's on us to win this ball game. 
And, and I think Tony White's defense goes out there, and, and again, with less time on the clock, they get that stop. They put them in a position where maybe they have to throw a Hail Mary or something like that. But I don't think the defense comes back on the field with the same mentality from throwing an interception as to having the win, right? I mean, that, that was my point. You kick the field goal, your defense has played well enough. They run back out there with an attitude of like, it's our opportunity to win this ball game, and, and they play lights out. That would be the scenario I think. Now, I can't prove that. That's just my opinion. But I think – you know, as a player, you go out there with a different mindset of like, we got a chance to win this game. It's on us, as opposed to, holy crap, what do we got to do to win this game? And that's human nature, right? I'm not saying these. That's anything against the players. That's human nature. And and I'll I'll back up. I said, kick the field goal, let the defense go win the game, and I'll back that. That's what I said in that situation. And I think Bill said the same thing. 489-1240, a quick timeout. Stick with us. We have more time for you to, t- to chime in on the phone lines on KFOR, KFORnow.com. About 20 minutes left on the radio, and then the rest uh, on the YouTube, Facebook, and Twitter channels. Hail Varsity YouTube channel, Real Red Reaction YouTube channel, KFOR Facebook, uh, Hail Varsity Radio Twitter at HVarsity Radio, and then the KFOR Twitter uh, after about 90 minutes, is uh, we'll, we'll go just to those uh, digital platforms if you still want to be a part of things. But a timeout, and then Matt Rule's press conference, his comments, he's been questioned about what the heck went on. That continues here on Real Red Reaction. Operation Santa is in full go mode. Continue the over 70-year tradition of helping Santa secure the gift of choice for hundreds of local children in need. Get details and donate securely now at KFORnow.com. What's the difference between this and this? Hey, that's my car! Opportunity. Because you thought leaving the keys in your car would be no big deal. No one would take your car, and now you're stuck going nowhere. This is Officer Tim Avely of the Lincoln Police Department. How can you stop a criminal from using your car for a joyride or worse, a crime? Simple. Don't leave your car warming up unattended. Sitting in a cold car, waiting for it to warm up is better than not having a car at all. Stay with your keys, please. The Lincoln Wedding and Celebration Show is back Sunday, January 7th at Embassy Suites downtown. Visit with a variety of vendors to plan your big day. Admission is free when you register online by January 5th. If your business is interested in hosting a booth at the event, there's still plenty of time. Contact Alpha Media to reserve. The Lincoln Wedding and Celebration Show, Sunday, January 7th at the Embassy Suites downtown. Get your free tickets now at KFORnow.com. Coming up on a Monday on the morning hookup from 10 to 11. We'll look back. Nebraska, Maryland, Evan Bland with the Omaha World Herald will join the show. We'll look at our NFL picks and also get your opinion on how your peacock experience was. That and a whole lot more on the morning hookup from 10 to 11 right here on KFOR. The KFOR Holiday Hall is back. We want you to load up with $500 gift cards from Leon's Gourmet Grocer, a $50 Jet Splash gift card. Plus a pair of tickets to Lincoln Symphony Orchestra's Deck the Halls at the Lead Center on December 3rd. Just tune in to KFOR Morning Weekdays to qualify. Or go to KFORnow.com and enter there, plus see the complete rules. It's the KFOR Holiday Hall with Leon's Gourmet Grocers, Jet Splash Car Wash, and the Lincoln Symphony Orchestra. Happy Holidays from KFOR. When you want a brand new kitchen, there's nothing to it. There's a brand new way to do it. Kitchen and bath. Marilyn Fazer recommends three day kitchen and bath. Working with Dave was an absolute delight. Once everything was scheduled, everything went perfect. Have you ever had a remodel done before? About 25 years ago, it was a nightmare. Was three day kitchen and bath on time? Uh, there was no delay. Everything was on time. All the deadlines were met. Everything came at once. Would you recommend three day kitchen and bath to your friends and neighbors? I highly recommend them to anybody. Top quality products and craftsmanship in three days or less. Call 3-Day Kitchen and Bath. Always on time as promised at the price promised and your job comes with complete satisfaction guarantee. No ifs, ands, or buts. Visit their website at 3daykitchen.com. That's 3daykitchen.com. 3-Day Kitchen and Bath. 
mention it there. For all your modeling needs, call Good Guy Construction at 435-3355. Listen to this station anytime, anywhere on Odyssey. Odyssey is your new audio home for all the music, news, sports, and podcasts that matter to you. Odyssey. That's A-U-D-A-C-Y. This is the Real Red Reaction Show. Phones are open now. 402-489-1240. You know, obviously a, a pretty um, a pretty disappointing loss. Um, you know, to go back and forth like that and have the ball at the end with a chance to take the lead with you know three minutes left and uh, to have that interception happen to uh, turn around and you know, give up a big run and you know, pass interference on third and long, obviously extremely disappointing. So um, credit to Maryland. They found a way to make one more play, but uh, I know the guys in our locker room are, are pretty upset, pretty hurt right now. And uh, uh, as I told them, uh, the things that cause winning and losing, it's not this um, you know, mysterious thing out there. It's winning the turnover battle, you know, fourth quarter shutouts, all the different things that we were not able to do tonight. And uh, um, still had a chance to win. So uh, I know we're pretty disappointed, but uh, we'll, uh, we'll regroup. So I'll see what uh, questions you guys have. On first single and third on the last drive, you didn't have to throw. Why did you guys throw? Um, uh, the first and goal play, I'm, you have to forgive me. I'm trying to, I'm trying to think back to the play calling as it happened. The, the, th- the third down play, I mean, I think, uh, you know, for us, it was man. You know, you have a corner out versus man. Um, their corner was playing number one in man, made an amazing play. He's playing. The guy just came off and saw the ball and picked it off. Um, I think we're, you know, on that play, we're trying to win the game. You know, we're trying to try to, you think a corner route's going to either be incomplete or, you know, kick a field goal. So um, I don't, I don't, you know, I don't know that you can, I don't know that you can um, do anything else on that. The, fir- the play before that was a hand, the first play, first down play was a handoff. And, uh, you know, Chubba has, you know, Chubba's taking third down reps. It's not a zone read, it's just a handoff. He pulled the ball because um, the guy came up the field, should have just handed it off. I haven't seen the tape. Maybe he saw something I didn't see. I think when he got outside the pocket and realized he had no protection, he threw the ball away. But that was a that was a running play, run call. It was not a pass play or an RPO. Did, on, the, on the third and go back to that, did everything go off, off correctly on that play? Or, or the routes run? Everything? Yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, it's uh, it's two unders by one and two, and a corner out by three, right? And you, and you play man, they, it's man. They go corners over. They, they chase one and two, and you throw the ball to the corner out to number three. And um, I have to wait and see the tape. The kid must have just looked up and saw the ball thrown. So I don't know if I don't know if we, you know, they ran the right routes. I don't know what happened, oh, or he made a great play. Can you discuss the, the decision there with Jeff after the two turnovers and taking him out, putting Chubb in, and just what kind of life he thought he gave you on that last drive? Yeah, you know, I, I thought, you know, obviously Heinrich went out there. We, we had discussed, you know, Heinrich's been a little beat up lately. Like, hey, maybe we'll give Jeff a series. Um, Heinrich came out with the ankle. You know, they, they cleared him to go back in, but he was trying to run out there. He looked pretty like he was laboring. So he went with Jeff. You know, um, um, uh, you know, we had two turnovers, you know, really three, but, you know, two. But the, the fumble just, you know, as a quarterback counter, you know, it's not there. We don't reverse field. They're just, you know, at some point. You know, we, we have to just kind of execute the plays that are there. And so we don't need guys trying to make a play when it's not there. Second and seven, get the third and five, go for on third and five. So, um, uh, you know, just kind of said, hey, let's give, let's give Chubba a shot. You know, so Chubba, I thought, moved us down the field. And uh, we're in a position to, you know, go win the game. You know, uh, anytime you put the third guy in who hasn't gotten as many reps, right, um, things can happen. Um, you know, the same play that – he pulled the ball on, you know, and it looked like a bad snap. And back in the end zone was when he ran the ball out on. So those are just handoffs. Those aren't zone reads. But I thought maybe it was a bad snap because what I'm looking for, you can't tell. That's why he went and ran the ball. But, again, um, wanted to run the clock there, uh, you know, get the ball down tight, um, to have a safe third down call, and then kick a field goal and let the defense go in it. And, um, but even still, even with the fumble, as I told the team in there, you know, you know there's always going to be different, obviously, narratives, you know, which I understand. Um, and obviously, it's not good enough when you have that many turnovers yet again. I mean, it's just the same thing over and over and over again. It has to, has to stop at some point. But I do expect our defense to go out there and get that stop. And, um, you know, uh, they got the, you know, obviously the pass interference. And then um, uh, we're able to make a couple plays going on and kick the field goal. So um, I think, you know, all of us, you know, in, in times like this have to say, what can we do better? What can I do better? And kind of go from there. With those turnovers, I know you said, something that has to keep getting work on and addressed is it something that you're not seeing or getting better in practice but then it's like 
Are we heading game day, or is it something that's still overall unique for us? Yeah, I mean, um, you know, um, the first one, I, as you could probably tell, is pretty animated. We ran a double, you know, ran a double move, and I felt like we ran a slant and go, and I thought it should have been pass interference. You know, I thought it got grabbed, and I was pretty animated. Um, so, you know, I, I, you know, the quarterback sees the guy come running out of it. Uh, the second one. Um, you know, that's a quarters beater. It was man. The ball has to, you know, the play has to be checked. It wasn't checked. And then Jalen ran right by the safety. So um, I think anytime you get to your second and third quarterback, obviously they're not getting the same reps. And so, you know, the, the fumble obviously is fumble obviously is a problem. You can't have that happen. So um, I think anytime what's happening across multiple players, you know, you have to, as a coaching staff, you have to sit there and say, well, you know, we're obviously not getting it done. And, um, um, you know, last thing I want to do is get up here and blame players. You know, there's there's certain things that have to happen, which is okay to say that, but you know, it, it falls on my head to get it done. And um, you saw the impact of us taking the ball away a few times. And um, you know, it's just uh, it's really you know, as I said to the guys, it's just a shame. It shows it, it overshadows all the other good things that they're doing. When you have four turnovers and you lose 13-10, I mean, that's, that's pretty hard to do. And so it means that we're you know being physical and running the football and doing some other decent things, but. Um, you know, the passing game really is just not where it needs to be for us. How complicated is that quarterback discussion at Wayne Ford? And you have three guys that have now played a lot for you. How do you kind of decide that? How do you want to manage this thing going forward? I think you just take it day by day. You know, you get in there tomorrow and you see sort of, A, where is, where is Heinrich at, you know, physically? Um, Heinrich's gift is that he's a dual threat player. So if he doesn't have the ability to run and cut and do all those things, then, you know, that limits, you know, kind of what he can do. Chuba is getting back to being healthy, and so it was good to see him. It's good to see him have an opportunity to go play. Um, so I think we just kind of get out there. You know, we have to get out back tomorrow and just take it day by day. And I hope that when we get to Tuesday, what we don't want to do is be you know waffling back and forth. We want to have somebody you know get the main reps, have someone else get the second best reps, and kind of go from there. But I I, I would be lying to you if I told you I knew who that was going to be right now. So Heinrich, you say it was an ankle today? Yeah, they, they, he came off. Um, they took him in the tent, said it was ankle. So they cleared him. You know, you can see him. He's kind of sprinting back and forth, but uh, certainly, you know, not the level that he normally would play at. You mentioned, you, you talked about um, wanting the guys to play loose, play free, um, and let him rip. Did, were you happy with the, the way that at least the defense played uh, today and their attitude? Yeah, I mean, I thought um, I thought it would came when it came to defensively, you know, it, it's just, but it's the same thing, right? It's the same game. They're all the same games for us, right? Like, it was, you know, pretty dominant on defense for long stretches and then, you know, explosive pass, right? Dominant on defense and explosive pass, right? So, um, you know, if, if, uh, if we continue to, you know, minimize those things, we can be even better on defense. Um, took the ball away today, which was great. I don't know, I don't know, even, I don't know if we sacked the quarterback or not, maybe once or twice. So, um, you know, I thought the defense came to play. I thought our special teams, you know, we, we ran the fake punt early in the game on the first drive, you know, we put Quentin Eyes out there as a true freshman kick returner, Ethan Nation as a true freshman punt returner. Like, you know, we were, we were ready, to, we were, we were going to play to win. Um, so, and then offensively, you know, I thought there were long times of like, you know, just dominant, like kind of downhill run game, right? We just, uh, just if you don't convert third downs or create explosives, it's hard to maintain that. That, you know, as I'm sitting out there, you know, not that I would ever want someone hurt, but like, you know, there some of their guys were kind of beat up and, um, but you have to put the ball in the end zone when you have those opportunities and uh, just weren't able to do that. Is Chubba in a place with his health? You mentioned he's, he's getting back. Where if you had to go to him in a situation, it wasn't just a drive like that, you need him for a full game that, that you could Yeah, I mean, I think he, he'd answer that better than me. I know, you know, the other day they did, they did the groin testing. They do it every week, and he, his strength was back to where it originally was. That being said, he definitely does have, you know, something that, you know, might require something at the end of the year. Um, but, you know, when his number was called, he went out there and he played and, you know, we're backed up on our own four yard line, right? He took us all the way down to the ups and four with a chance to score. I mean, you talk about moments that can you talk about moments that can ignite an offense and ignite a team. Like even in the first half, right? We take the ball all the way down the field, we go for it fourth and two, we get it, we get down to the twenty seven yard line. Um, you know, that's a that was a tough call for me because that had set the twenty five yard line because of the wind today. And um you know, we thought, hey, let's go for a fourth and two with the wind and, and didn't get it. Then he brings us all the way back down again, and then we throw the interception in the end zone. To think that we had two interceptions in the end zone today is difficult, right? So um, and then that drive at the end, I mean, again, those are those are drives that can ignite a season and turn a season around, and um, we just didn't finish them. Um, 
So, uh, but I'm, I'm, I'm happy to see that Chubba got a chance to play. And, um, you know, we will just, if, if he's the guy, we'll coach him up as best we can. Well, what was the message to your team with two games and two more chances to clinch ball eligibility? Yeah, you know, I, I don't, I, I just, uh, you know, I think right now, I think when you win and you lose, it's really important to talk about uh, the moment that you're in. Um, I think for me, it's important to remind them, you know, that you know how much I respect them and care about them, and how I know some guys are really hurting, and some guys I'm sure feel like, man, I let the guys down, or if I hadn't done this. But you know, it's the man in the arena, the guy that has the guts to go out there that um, you know puts himself out there. So I just encourage them to make sure they understand that at the University of Nebraska, I expect us to. I expect us to finish the game on offense, but also expect us to finish the game on defense. And that uh, this shouldn't be anything but a team. And, um, um, you know, that when I think about that game, I think about what I could have done differently, not, oh, you should have done this. So I encourage the team to do that. Um, I encourage the team to come back next week, ready to go. Um, you know, this is, uh, as I said, the things that we talk about, not beating ourselves, um, not, not having penalties, winning the turnover battle, running the ball and stopping the run, affecting the quarterback, fourth quarter shutouts, middle eight, all the things that we talk about um, are, are really what winning and losing is about. Um, and so our guys are learning that lesson, sometimes really good, sometimes really bad uh, in terms of like in tough circumstances, not tough circumstances, but if they can learn everything there is to know about winning and losing in these times, uh, they'll be really good in the end. So just reminded them that, you know what, we'll go play Wisconsin. It's another big 10 team. It'll probably be the same type of game, probably get down to the end probably need to make one more play than they, you know, than, than, than the other team did tonight, Maryland did to give them credit. But I think I really do believe that that's the message. And um, I believe that our seniors, you know, they're winners and I know how badly they want to win, how badly they want to finish with a win and, and get to a bowl game and all those different things. And um, sometimes you have to overcome these circumstances and, and show back up, you know, when you're kind of crushed, to get there. And uh, I, um, I expect our guys will do that uh, versus a really tough Wisconsin team next week. And so, um, but that was the message there. You know, there wasn't a lot of yelling and screaming. I know the guys, the guys played hard. They laid, their, laid all their heart and soul on the line, you know, got guys banged up, other guys stepped in, you know, I just, uh, I just want them to learn from it and continue to get better. Else yeah, Quentin, um, unfortunately, you know, we, we, um, you know, we tried to take the pads off a little bit this week and, Help the guys out, you know. So we we took the pads off on Tuesday. Wanted to be fresh for today. Put the pads off on Wednesday. Just the tops and uh, just uh, was tackling somebody like a you know butting a guy up and hit his shoulder. And um, uh, so we thought he'd be cleared for the game today. Wasn't quite ready. He went certainly wanted to play. So we expect he'll be ready next week. But uh, just kind of an unfortunate event on Wednesday. Chubba, was that um, the same thing that he'd been dealing with earlier in the season, or was it something? Yeah, no. I'm sure Chubba's just been kind of uh, dealing with that groin since um, since he heard it in preseason. Anyway, thanks, guys. That was Matt Rule, his post game, and uh, a lot covered there. And his response was trying to win the game uh, with the play call. And uh, it's either an incompletion, incompletion a lot of times, but you look at the fourth quarter numbers six points for Maryland, two field goals. That's two drives. But off of two turnovers, and uh, it, it's just maddening that at this level of football, Nebraska has been as bad as they have been with taking care of the football, be it fumbles, be it interceptions, really when it comes to, to just quarterback play, and Nebraska's got some decisions to make. How do they get to six moving forward? How do they come back emotionally from these back-to-back -back losses? You've had uh, this roller coaster that's been – different you've been on a couple of uh of skids here you, you've you've had a two-game losing streak to start the season you dropped michigan then you reeled off three in a row now you've lost two in a row and you're trying to snap that as uh, wisconsin's wounded and injured michigan state was wounded and injured maryland hadn't won since september 30th and your defense did everything but but finish the game for you today. Uh, they get walked off. The offense had their moments on the ground, but you've got a you've got a an identity offensively right now that is pass first, and, and that is not what you do well. That's not even 
been your game plan the last two weeks, even though uh, the temptation is there against secondaries that can air quote be had? Uh, Chad checks in. Serious question. If Nebraska had an average Big Ten quarterback, Illinois' quarterback, uh, Minnesota's quarterback, or better, Harburg's 10th, what would the win-loss record be? Yeah, three I, more I, wins. Th- th- yeah, that's fair because you, you would subtract turnovers. And, fellas, those have all been back-breaking turnovers in all of Nebraska's losses. Uh, it's been the quarterback position. It's been the play calling. Now, Sims came in, and with those some of those bubble passes, those were on target. Uh, Harburg didn't even really seem comfortable, hasn't seemed comfortable with those. I think we've uh, – I, I listen, it's a short sample size, but the guy I'm circling and trying to coach up moving forward at quarterback is Chubba Purdy. Awful interception, but uh, I saw one drive. I saw one nice completion. I saw him run three times for 33 yards, and I saw an offense that had two explosive runs, one explosive pass, and – Unfortunately, one turnover as uh, Nebraska falls today, 13 to 10. But Chubb is your guy. We've been asking about him for, for several weeks here, and it's been a, an injury that's kind of plagued him. Uh, I love uh, Harburg's heart. He is physically not capable right now based on that ankle. It kept him out, and then just there was no spark at all. There's been a regression, so I think he might be in his own head on top of limited ability, ability, and then you, you tried one more time to go to the well with Sims, and it was a meth lab explosion uh, with turnovers and taking care of the football. Back-to-back plays to begin drives, turnovers by Jeff Sims. Not moving the ball, he's, turnover. He's settled the ball, in turnover. for a little bit. All right, you're just waiting for something bad to happen. But he but he began a drive with an, with an interception. Very first play of that drive. And then Nebraska gets the ball back. Very first play of the next drive is another turnover. Two plays, two drives, two turnovers. Done. I mean, that, it's not even moving the ball a little bit and changing the field. It was turning the ball over and making the defense have to go to work once again in their own territory. Field position was a huge deal in this game. We talked about it as we were watching it. it Nebraska's first three drives were the 11, the 6, and the 11. <laughs> right and move the ball a little bit and they had the fake punt and that there was a turnover right after the fake punt which killed a lot of momentum um but and uh, and on the pregame show uh, Gary uh, Sharp and I both mentioned the weather and the wind the wind was a huge factor in this game Maryland in the uh, going toward the south into the wind short pass short pass short pass short pass immediately when they had the wind at their back let it fly and they had a two-play, 33-second drive that took 79 yards because they had the wind at their back, went went deep. And when they lined up on that final drive on third down and 15, I told you they're going they're going to go deep right. And they, they threw the ball and got the pass interference penalty on Tommy Hill. The, the whole design of that play was just go along, we'll see if we can get a P.I. And that's exactly what they were playing because they had the wind at their back. The wind was a huge factor today. And so why throw the ball into the wind on third third and goal from the five-yard line? Nebraska didn't mess with it at all against uh, Northwestern. Northwestern leading Wisconsin, Purdue, <laughs> leading Minnesota. And who wants the West? I got it. You take it. The uh, infield fly drops for a base hit. Greg checks in. You have two picks in the end zone because you keep letting Sat call the plays when we get two picks, where we get two picks uh, in the end zone. If Nebraska wins the the West and goes to Indianapolis, faces Michigan, Ohio State, it doesn't matter. I'm watching that game like Cheech and Chong. I could care less what happens. (laughs) I'm with you, man. I'm, I'm, yeah. (laughs) 70 to 6, bag of Doritos, I'm fine. It doesn't matter what happens. I got the salsa. We're good. Yeah, we're, we're gonna need some. We're gonna need some some strong medication, Elijah. Buckle up, brother. The next two weeks, right? 
those TV executives, if Nebraska makes it to the Big Ten championship game, anybody from the West, they're, they're going to they're going to be drinking hard, and it's going to be uh, they're going to be uh, disastrous. Not me. It's a open bar tab at St. Elmo's, <laughs> courtesy of the Big Ten. Just, just cancel the Big Ten title game. Make the big game. I'm not sure if it's in Michigan or Ohio State. I think it's at Michigan, at the Big House. That's your Big Ten title game. Cancel the Big Ten title game. Just put all the resources into that game because we all know whoever wins that game is winning the Big Ten. It's pointless to have a Big Ten championship game at this point. Who's going to watch? Well, how's how's good old Utah scored 28 points? They haven't scored 28 points Last couple of weeks, they're uh, they're on the road leading Washington. I thought should minus, have went to the sports book, Elijah. I, I, I thought <laughs> Utah minus uh, plus eight was ridiculous, and I, I should have done that. Yeah, uh, I'll watch the Big Ten championship game through a lava lamp. <laughs> well, guys, we are at uh, over ninety minutes here. We're five minutes of overtime, so let's step aside from our broadcast on KFOR. We're going to keep it rolling here as we've done the past couple of weeks. No break for us. It'll sound pretty seamless for the stream listeners. Now, Tim Bob has to check out as well as we've yep. reached his allotted 90 minutes. So, Tim Bob, we thank you for tuning in. For anyone tuning Tim in Bob, thanks, bud. on the yes, air, bro, on KFR, if you want more post-game coverage, tune in the Hail Varsity YouTube page, the Real Red Reaction YouTube page, both places you can go. You can also check out KFOR on Facebook, KFOR Sports on Twitter, or Hail Varsity Radio on Twitter. So plenty of places for you to check out the post-game reaction. But that'll do it for us for our on-the-air coverage here of the Real Red Reaction Show, Nebraska, Maryland on KFOR. All right. As we roll forward, Bill and I at the single barrel. Bill's got that 6,000-yard stare towards the bar here <laughs> at the single barrel. Elijah Herbal needs a hug um, <laughs> with this <laughs> offense. I think Nebraska needs a hug. Uh, let's hear from everything uh, Santosh. I want to ask you guys again, how do we miss this bad on a quarterback situation? Is that on Matt Rule and Matt Marcus Satterfield? I'm lost. Here's here's what happens. All right. And this is this is a fair discussion point. In one hand, you have Casey Thompson that has surgery and he can't compete for the job. You also have Smothers that was dinged up, was not available. But both guys played, uh, Smothers played a great three quarters and then another gut punch loss, sorry, uh, happened uh, against Iowa if you go back. Uh, Casey Thompson is done for the year. He hurt his knee at Florida Atlantic. But presumably you moved on from what you had at quarterback because you wanted a dual threat option on offense. You wanted a running quarterback, and right now, that doesn't seem to be what you want your identity because you're, you're, you're a pro-style guy in Satterfield that uh, because of what you got in Sims and then what Harburg has and hasn't done, and now you went to pretty, uh, it, it's square peg, round hole. You've not adapted as a coordinator to play calls what uh, you guys are capable of doing. And then on the other side of that coin your guys have not made your offensive coordinator look good uh, with the decision making at times uh you were sol at quarterback you didn't do your your homework in my opinion on sims you took the word of a former assistant that was 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 the head coach at georgia tech on sims and you probably were going after a couple of other guys in the portal that passed on you so you settled on sims at quarterback it's gone horribly wrong with turnovers nice kid good person not being personal you just haven't had the results uh you go to to, to harburg who uh was nice and tough and then everyone's kind of figured him out and there's been no response and he's probably in his own head confidence wise because all the turnovers and now you go to pretty and every time I've seen Pretty play, and I hope he can shake himself, but he might be what he is or has been, uh, and that's a guy who makes some some tough decisions. Whenever he's been in Michigan or Oklahoma, just two games that he's seen time in the last two years, there's been an interception, and there's been an interception in the red zone. Uh, and when it comes to health or taking care of the football, 
I, I, I would hate to see someone worse than the two previous mentioned quarterbacks in Sims or Harburg, but maybe Purdy is just a turnover machine in practice. I don't know, on top of the health question mark. So you are you are absolutely hosed right now. And the, the, the least problematic quarterback you have right now is Purdy, and he's only had one drive, and that was a bone-crushing turnover uh, and throw and play call. Uh, to end it for for Nebraska's offense today. I don't have an answer for you, but there's why you're at where you're at. Bad decision-making, bad evaluation, and you've had to live with that choice, Elijah and Bill, at quarterback, on top of all the injuries on offense, on top of not being a purely dominant run offense. But you've not wanted to to stick with the run as as much or as long as you could have either. uh, that that much to me is very certain about the, the preference on what you want to do offensively with what Satterfield's called. I want to get back to the, the quarterback evaluation and bringing in Sims here really fast because you look across the field and what is Matt Rule's staff known for in recruiting? They're finding toolsy guys with la- athletic traits and turning them into football players. And it works at a lot of different positions on the offense. That is not what you want from your quarterback. I think what Matt Roll and the offensive staff did whenever they went and found Jeff Sims was they found a very toolsy quarterback. He's athletic. He's tall. He's got a big arm. Yeah, he had some turnover problems, but what's the, the hallmark of a Matt Roll team? We're going to develop him into a guy that utilizes those tools in the best way possible. And simply put, I have not seen development at the quarterback position. Sims didn't make any strides from where he was at, at Georgia Tech when he stepped in at Nebraska. Heinrich Harburg still is the same guy he was six weeks ago in terms of confidence, if not a step back. Chubba Purdy, to me, he led a good drive, which he did the same against Minnesota, but what was the the issue for for Purdy last year? Bad decision-making, inaccurate throws. It led to an interception at a really bad time today. It just strikes me as whenever you went into the portal to go find Sims, you went and found a guy with all the quarterbacking tools that, that coaches salivate over, and you didn't actually look at the quarterbacking ability. And I think that can work for 21 other positions on your team to say, hey, look at the tools of this guy. We'll develop him into a football player. There's intangibles at the quarterback position that I don't think Nebraska has with any of the guys on their roster. And I hope whenever they go back into the portal, they don't look for a toolsy guy. They don't look for a guy that that makes you go, wow, with the, the potential and say, we're going to turn him into a quarterback. Nebraska needs a guy that is a, a leader at the quarterback position and a guy that just keeps that offense moving. As opposed to going and looking for a guy with the tools, you look for a guy that's a ready-made quarterback, which is hard to find in the portal, but there's going to be options out there. It's about trusting the evaluation. Instead of finding that toolsy guy, go and find the quarterback. So I think that's what the issue is this year with Nebraska. They didn't go and find a quarterback. They found an athlete with a whole bunch of tools, and they said, we'll turn him into a quarterback, despite the fact that you don't have a dedicated quarterbacks coach and an offensive coordinator that's been suspect to his quarterback development in, in years past. And I know you can look at Rattler, but Rattler was a five-star. Jeff Sims wasn't. And Rattler had his fair share of issues last year in terms of turnovers as well. So I think that's what the issue is with the quarterback evaluation with Sims. And they have one offseason to get it right. They do. And fellas, we got to go down this yellow brick road, yellow being gold. Um, you're going to, you, you're Nebraska. Do you want to get into the arms race of really fixing the quarterback spot through NIL? Right. Are you willing to, to play that game and pray that you get it right? Cause you've presumably spent, you've already spent on Casey Thompson and you've spent on Jeff Sims. So it, there's going to be some sort of, there's, there's your introductory rate. <laughs> and then there's your, oh my goodness, exorbitant rate. And it might be a, a high price tag, but boy, you could hit a home run with home run with it. Or it could be uh, the same spot where uh, you're, you're playing merry-go-round because you don't have a quarterback right now that can get it done for you. You don't have a play caller right now that can get it done for you. And uh, that's a bad combination. Well, what other option do you have besides going transfer portal and playing the arms race? What other option do you have? No, I'm saying you, you, you're going to go to the portal, but do you want to win in the portal? Do you want to outbid somebody in the portal hoping you get it right or, or knowing you get it right? Because you're in the portal for two reasons. 
you uh, you don't want to compete or you want to go win. And you got to go find the guy that wants to go win and has shown to be a, a really sound decision maker, a, a la Michael Penix, right? Is Penix the perfect example of of what's out there portal-wise where you – and that's DeBoer, who is his OC, by the way, at IU, just as an example. So, But look at DJ uh, Ugalala. I can't pronounce his last name, at Oregon State. Look at him. Right. Do you really think – Oregon State has the the armament in the their NIL resources to go outbid Nebraska. It's a, it's a case of Nebraska just not talking to a dude. Like, like I I don't legitimately believe that Oregon State came in and had a giant NIL offer. That's not what their game is. That's not what the kind no, of they, football they had, they're a ten they win football. Pro, they're a ten win football program. Uh, a really good coach in in Coach Smith and um, it was established it was, coach. It was an, it was a job he wasn't going to not win. Or maybe he had the job given to him. That's the other thing. You can promise the job and get whoever you want. That's not how rule rolls. Uh, I'm, I'm look, trying to think back. Who was available in the portal last year? A couple of years ago was kind of a banner year. Cam Ward, Caleb Williams. Everybody missed on Cam uh, Ward except Washington State. Right, but Penix. I mean, there was, there was three or four really marquee players that were portal guys. Bo Nix. Uh, yeah, Bo Nix. But there, uh, last year. Two years ago, uh, Bo Nix was this year. Um, the Oregon State guy, DJ U. Um, I go ukulele, <laughs> right? So, what was the market? Jeff Sims was probably a top five uh, transfer portal quarterback, and Nebraska rolled the dice with him. Like the, the NIL money is one thing to say they got to come up with it, but at some point. Those businesses that have been eager to give money to the NIL and to an athlete probably need to make sure that there's a return on, on investment. And if you look at some of the, the maybe the two most famous NIL deals over the past two years for Nebraska football, DeColdis Crawford lasted Transfer. a year, didn't play, uh, and, and, and leaves. And Jeff Sims with Amigos this year. And after the first game of the season, people, you know, that becomes a bit of a punchline. I'm sure there are people who have NIL deals at Nebraska who are doing okay. But people around here in this economy are thinking, look, I I want Nebraska football to to win and I want to support and I want to support these athletes. And I believe in NIL as a business owner with a lot of money. But uh, if I'm going to do it, I need... I need somewhat of a sure sort of thing to put that money up. And, and I think people are probably looking at L going, wait a minute here. I just can't be given money just because I need to see somebody who's proven themselves. And then, I mean, that's the, that's the deal. Uh, and so I, I'm not sure NIL is, is the saving grace to Nebraska's quarterback situation unless they find somebody who's out there who is – you know, who has proven themselves and and right now and it's going to be a good R- R- ROI on who on, on that money. I Dylan Gabriel's the guy that comes to mind and Brennan, our friend from the black Hills chimes in on him. That's a two, that's a two year guy. It, Gabriel it, it, came in last year with Williams and he, yeah, yeah, he was in that class. But, but again, you go to Oklahoma, even with no more Lincoln Riley, you've got a ton around you. You're a top 10, top 15 program. Yeah. Nebraska's not there. So, uh, there's, there's and, and you you know we talked about this on average on the average Joe sports show and I think on Hale Bar City too. Nebraska's got to go in and they've got to get a couple. Well, you know what? One guy looking to leave to be a star someplace is not going to ne- want to go to a place where he's going to have to f- compete for the job. Somebody gets in the transfer portal because they're not getting the time where they are and they want the time where they're going. And if, and if you get a star transfer portal quarterback and you say we're looking for two, well, it's the old adage. If you have two quarterbacks, you don't have one. If somebody is good in the portal, they're going to want to be the guy. That's what Jeff Sims came to Nebraska to be was the guy, and right away we discovered it's not going to work out. And Nebraska is playing its most promising H-back and tight end as the starting quarterback the last seven weeks. So you can't say we're going to go to the portal and we're going to have a and we're going to bring in quarterback competition. Guys in the portal don't want competition. They want the job. And so you better hope that 
Daniel you're, you're Kalen, right. <laughs> who had Daniel Kalen, who had did not have a great senior season at Bellevue West, right? But is still promising. Everybody's all jacked about the stars that he earned in the summer. Was not a great senior season. Yes, he had some injuries with key players around him, but that kid had better be ready to be a solid backup next year at Nebraska. They, Nebraska cannot go into next year thinking Daniel Kalen is our is our answer. Tommy Frazier is not coming through the door next year. Tommy Frazier came to campus 25 years ago, 30 years ago, ready to be the starter, believing he was the starter, believing he was the best player. But that's not happening, okay? So we're excited that Daniel Kalen, a Nebraska kid, is signing with Nebraska and is recruiting people to come in. But that portal's got to be one guy that's going to win the job or get the job and prove that he deserves a job, and then the NIL deals will come. No, I think I think Daniel Kalen needs to come in with the mindset that he is going to be the starter next season, but the coaching staff can't come in with the mindset that he's going to be the starter next season. You go yes, find your correct. starter in the yes. portal, and if Daniel Kalen beats him out, awesome. If if Heiner Carberg, who I think is going to be around next year, I think he's probably going to get a shot at quarterback in the spring. If he beats him out, you say, okay, you know what? It's the best we got. Maybe we go to the portal again in the summertime. But you got to roll with competition at the quarterback spot. So I don't think Nebraska rolled with competition this summer. I think they brought in Sims and said, this is our anointed starter. He is the guy. And after two games, everybody in the state realized, no, he's not the starting quarterback at Nebraska. And now what does Nebraska have? Guys that were fourth and fifth string on the depth chart in the spring. So with that in mind, I think you got to bring in your presumptive starter in the portal. You're not going to name him the starter. You have an open competition between Kalen, a portal guy, and Heinrich Harburg, and you probably bring in one more portal guy that you think is toolsy. I know I said that earlier, but you bring in a guy that you think can have potential down the road, and you have a completely new quarterback room. You have to have a completely new quarterback room by the time spring football rolls around. You do, and you better find somebody that can get that quarterback room ready. Whether you bring somebody in with the portal or JUCO and what you've recruited, and you need uh, come to Jesus with your offensive coordinator. We'll run first, we'll run second, and we're going to call pass plays that are safe, and we're going to re- really reinforce the decision-making process. And there needs to be consequences not to screw the quarterback's head or make him gun-shy, but there's there, there's a balance. You get it. And for tough for far too long, the the offense has has plagued this football program this season with turnovers and decisions and play calling. I mean, how many worst case scenarios have happened with ill timed fumbles or interceptions? I mean, today was really a culmination of the last several weeks. And he thought it, it needs to go away. And guys, it's followed Nebraska around like a dark cloud. I mean, that this is the same team we saw in the spring game with all the turnovers. Mm-hmm. And I know the team develops, and and I know the team uh, practices. Now we saw a little bit of missed tackling. Uh, if they took the pads off, maybe that's why <laughs> uh, it showed up today a little bit worse. And I don't have the. Uh, play count but scott i'm going to trust you michigan did not call one pass play the entire second half against penn state not one i mean nebraska can line up and and just they can get creative in the run game fellas with the zone read with the option game with the quarterback run game with just the the pistol run i mean you saw the the same play three times where you had an unbalanced line you ran it to the short side the weak side on a counter cut back and that thing popped for about 12 to 13 yards per carry and you can keep running that presumably <laughs> until they stop it and um uh, Searle said this to us a long time ago elijah and bill you're either a checklist play caller where you go down your checklist and or or you stick with what's working and then you move on once something stops working and I think for the second year in a row, Nebraska has a checklist play caller where you just go down the list. And the, the last two weeks, he's looked at the vulnerabilities of a Michigan State defense and of a Maryland defense 
and it's been the passing game that is where you need to make your money. And you, what you do best is you run the football, and I would side and lean with what I do best on offense, and that's run the football. Make them stop it before you resort to throwing the football with unsteady quarterbacks that aren't pass-first guys. You don't have any pass-first guys on offense. Well, well, to put it more simply, just quickly here, you've had back-to-back coordinators from last year with Mark Whipple, this year with Satterfield, who are either unwilling or unable to craft a game plan that suits their offensive players. They want to call a game plan that is their offense. It's the offense they know. It's their They can put their stamp, their patent on their offense. That's the offense that they want to call. And I don't know if it's unwilling or unable, but either way, I, I gave it the benefit of the doubt earlier. Maybe you've had so many injury issues and you've had so many backups playing that it's taking time for you to craft an offense that works for these guys. Through nine games of the season, it has been proven that Marcus Satterfield is not crafting a game plan that is tailored to the strong suits of his players. That's all I know right now. Uh, I'm not saying it's fireable. I think if you get some better players in for Marcus Satterfield's offense, I think he can be a fine offensive coordinator, but it's a real indictment that both Mark Whipple and Marcus Satterfield are both unable to create or craft an offense that brings out the strong suits of the players that they have, especially at the quarterback position. Brennan nails it. I mean, you you, you get a guy that, I mean, is is you've got a handful of times where Sant has done really nice work with the feel of, Let's take a shot. Let's get it to Malachi. Let's get it to Lloyd. That's Purdue. Let, that's let, no, that's let, Northwestern. Let's run the play Coach Osborne gave us. Sure. Okay. <laughs> Point is, is he used it. All right. It's where I'm going. It worked. They were touchdowns. Uh, Washington on the back shoulder was big. But just trying to show the brain off or be too cute or surprise, look how dashing I am with the, the imaginative play call versus the simple is um is is very real uh arrogant play calling is is an issue and and phil checks in there's zero feel right now more comments coming in um uh danny says satterfield went scott frost trying to show off uh, what he wants to do on offense uh you have dion uh, with that play call, he probably messed up pretty for life. <laughs> uh, uh, many major industry pundits questioned rules hiring of Satterfield to start the season. That's from Steve. Uh, and tired of rule blaming losses on the defense. That's ridiculous. I don't feel like that's a bit he... far. He's not blaming him. He, he's just saying if you're out there to shut the game down, if the offense doesn't get it done, he's expecting the defense to get it done. You know, th- this is the kind of game where I think we've had a couple of them over the last 20 years where, you know, everybody's unified. And, and even in the loss, you know, it's 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 on us. You know, they, they this happened and we need to be better. We need to, you know, pick up the offense when this happens. And we win as a team, we lose it as a team. And then about 15 years or 10 or 15 years from now, when the guys start getting married and they get together for the bachelor parties, and then they all start going, what the – was were we thinking that was terrible? I can't believe that happened. It was ridiculous. And, you know, when you get a couple of pops in them, they'll start, they'll start to they'll have start therapy speaking, sessions. Speaking the truth. <laughs> you know, they'll have some therapy sessions about, uh, about uh, some things that they experience. But, look, I, I am willing to give him the benefit of the of, – the excuse about injuries. Although I think, you know, the offensive line has, I think, overcome an awful lot and, it, better. and has not. And even after, after Piper's injury, um, I, I think that that group has played, you know, reasonably well and has not been a glaring weakness. I think Prohaska has come in and, and uh, done a decent job. I think the offensive line has, has stabilized. Now, when all this went down, I talked to him, okay, what's the depth behind him? You're talking about Gatula and Knutson and, and Sledge. But that starting unit has been, I think, has been pretty uh, pretty good, to be honest with you, despite injuries and lack of uh, experience depth. Yes, and you've got, you've got receivers. But that pass play, it was in, it was in traffic, too. You had, you had six people over there in that area. You know, that might be a play you run 
from the 20 or the 25, but not from inside the five. It's just a traffic jam that you're throwing the ball into. It's condensed. Guys, we'll go around the table here. Final thoughts. We'll have plenty more time Monday as we'll be live down at Rosie's downtown, 10th and P. We can't thank our friends here at the Single Barrel enough for having us out today for Real Red Reaction. Also for getting things kicked off this morning at 7 a.m. with the weekend edition. We invite you to check out Real Red Reaction and, of course, the Hale Varsity YouTube channel. Uh, tell a friend, uh, Spotify, iTunes, Google Play with the podcast, KFOR Facebook, KFOR Twitter, uh, Hale Varsity Radio Twitter. Give that a follow. Find Elijah on Twitter at Herbal Essence, Bill Dolman at Bill Dolman, me, Chris Schmidt at Schmidt underscore radio. We can keep on rocking too, uh, but I'm thinking we'll we'll put a bow on this and uh, back-to-back missed opportunities for Nebraska. The defense responded like we thought they would. They did everything except physically take the football and, and win it for Nebraska. You've got a quarterback merry-go-round. I don't think you have a quarterback. I think it's Purdy next week. Yeah, I don't think you have. I don't. I don't think you have a quarterback controversy. It is Chuba, uh, and he just has to be better with it. Really nice for him to come in and, and move the team like he did. The unfortunate part, though, is the interception. There needs to be a screaming session inside uh, Rule's office at his offensive coordinator, and uh, there needs to be. Uh, more oversight with his offensive coordinator, period. There needs to be more emphasis on the run, and Nebraska needs to, to, to really live what they preach about being a downhill running football team. And uh, when push comes to shove, uh, throwing the football, aside from the, the fumble on the quarterback counter, uh, did Nebraska in. So moving forward with Purdy, we'll see if Nebraska can get off the schneid and get to six, Elijah. I'm currently doing some research here on what college football team has the most turnovers in a single season. It looks like since 2008, it's Idaho with 2000 and or with, uh, sorry, 39 turnovers. So I think Nebraska is still 11 away from that number th- with two games left to go. So maybe they'll give a run for that money, but I'm going to look into that real fast. And I'll turn the floor over to bill. <laughs> well, when you said 2000, I thought, yeah, that's probably accurate for what Nebraska's turned it over. I was- Mitch Sherman has indicated in the athletic with the story that he did that Nebraska is uh, what was 130 pl- uh, to the plus One, 20 years 20 years ago Nebraska was 130 turnovers to the plus and in the last 20 years 113 to the minus uh, it's, it's just an incredible and unacceptable um, but it. This team is, did, did not commit a penalty last week. Uh, Illinois at the buzzer again in overtime. Sorry to interrupt. Beats, uh, beats, beats Indiana. Indiana. Yeah. Uh, so that helps Nebraska's RPI. Arizona um, at the buzzer beats the Buffs. Field goal. That's hilarious. Or that's going to hurt Nebraska's RPI. <laughs> <laughs> so, um you know, Nebraska's done reasonably well in terms of not committing the stupid penalties that they, you know, were committing. And we talked about at the beginning of the year, they, they couldn't have those third down and twos turn into third down and, uh, you know, sevens or third down and twelves. For the most part, they've been kind of disciplined along the offensive line. Not a lot of penalties in the game. Uh, they had a couple, couple of soccer falls that, uh, you know, got a couple of penalties called on Maryland today. So that was good. Um, but look, it, it, it three losses this season by a grand total of nine points, and then you you know go back to the recent regime and all those single loss, single score losses, and you can say yeah they're they're close, but you know the three losses this year were all there wasn't those that they had kept those games close. All three of those games should have should have been wins. Minnesota should have been a win. Uh, Michigan State should have been a win. That was. Uh, you know, loss of a uh, lack of effort and focus, I think, in that game. Uh, and this one, you know, the, the booth, the to, booth to, let him down. To be there with five turnovers, you lose by three. And that last turnover, you you were going to go minus one. You ended up going minus two at that last interception. But I, I hope this is not an analytics staff. 
I don't know that it necessarily is. We're hearing a lot about that in the NFL. Well, here you go for two, or here you go for it. Here you don't go for it. And you have these. Well, you got to go for two. Right, but you. Two but, of the portal. But, 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 but you hear, all, you know, you hear in the NFL every Sunday now, well, you know, the play sheet, the analytics dictate that you. And all of a sudden we're taking out the gut instinct that, you know, I think of all the sports, the gut instinct of the coach is more prevalent in football than in, in any other. And, you know, maybe maybe baseball, but baseball is so far out of whack with analytics that they've, that they've taken that out of the human element, out of the managerial position, that they're just robotic anymore. But football has always been a, you know, coached by feel, coached by your gut, coached by your instinct. Uh, and I, I'm hoping that, that this staff is not allowed the analytics of MIT to trickle into their play calling. Well, it's third down and goal from the four-yard line. This indicates that we ought to pass here and load up the left side of the field and put as many people in that position and hope that the quarterback can throw it right on the money. If that's where we are, then, you know, why bother? You know, and let's just go by what the, what MIT sends us every week and we go by the analytics and just call plays off that. If, if you don't have a better feel at you know, third and goal from the five-yard line with three minutes to go in the game, and you, 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 your gut instinct isn't is is to run it, but you decide because my sheet says to pass. We got a problem. Well, last comment: the conservative Husker post Chuba just missed Coleman was wide open. Nebraska's quarterbacks, fellas, have missed a lot of wide open, and that wide open has turned into an interception. And uh, he threw it to Kemp at the pylon. And the point is, is you're throwing the football in that moment. Uh, and I know it's seven to go, and you're trying to go for the win. I don't disagree with being aggressive, but for the love of, of all things holy, <laughs> just figure out a way to hold on to the football, get the lead late, and let your defense go win it. And that didn't happen against Minnesota. But, again, it was it was prompted by by a turnover. So just, just a nightmare day for Nebraska. Let's see where they're at emotionally, what's left in the tank. Uh, too many good dudes on this team that are seniors that have given their heart and soul for 6,000 years, it feels like, <laughs> for them to get to a bowl game. And Nebraska is going to have a third opportunity to take on a team that is reeling. Uh, Michigan State got healthy uh, today. Maryland got healthy and got bowl eligible. Wisconsin has lost three out of four or will if, if they don't. Uh, pull a rabbit out of the hat against Northwestern, and Northwestern is suddenly a game away from bowl eligibility. The uh, <laughs> the the Illini are knocking on that bowl door. Uh, Minnesota is getting uh, donkey punched right now by Purdue. So it's it's a fascinating mess that is the West. I have Glad confirmed, by the way, I have confirmed that as far as ready, readily available stats that I can find online, the Idaho Vandals of 2012 hold the uh, yes. FBS record for most turnovers in the season. They had 39. Nebraska finds themselves at 27. Through There's still time. Games, 12 turnovers away from tying uh, 13 away from setting an FBS record. Wisconsin's defense, I'm sure they're going to get a, generate a couple of turnovers next week. That's almost a guarantee. You can take that one to the sports book. And we'll see about <laughs> Iowa. Their defense has been great at generating turnovers. So an FBS record could be on the table this year for Nebraska's offense. And that is as down as it can get on a post-game reaction show. But that is where we're at right now whenever we're talking about this Husker football team. I think in a game-in, game-out basis, you can guarantee two turnovers from this offense, if not more. And the question is going to be, against Wisconsin and against Iowa, how can Nebraska – it's not even limit the turnovers anymore. It's, it's how can they find a way to win despite the turnovers because the turnovers are damn near a guarantee. They, they, they found ways against – Three teams in October. Daddy, thanks for your listenership. You said, I needed this post-game reaction. I'm off to get a steak and a beer. <laughs> hey, the single barrel is a pretty good it idea. It is, yeah. I'm feeling a bit better just airing my frustrations. We're here for you. And listen, we don't root, but there is a tinge of frustration in our voice because it'd be, it'd be real cool to, to cover Nebraska in Arizona in December. Just saying. Uh, it'd be fun to get to a bowl game. Uh, we think pretty conservative Husker is going to be the quarterback next week. And uh, it's just it's a steep, steep hill with Wisconsin and Iowa. Uh, we'll see where the, the – Speaking of Iowa, is there any greater lock this week that Iowa Rutgers is 3 nothing in the third quarter? Well, if they shut out Rutgers – Is that over right? Is it, is it the overs already? 
Three nothing. It, it's twenty eight <laughs> combined. So it's going to be a seventeen fourteen. Nebraska's going to have the negative unders, over unders against Iowa. The unders on Iowa has been free money for about seven weeks now. So if you're just <laughs> joining that party, that is your if, loss. If you're Vegas, you're taking that off the board. <laughs> just like Ivy League betting, you can no longer do it legally. Nebraska what, what? Iowa over unders will be will be negative numbers. And the under still might hit. <laughs> Single digits for over under Nebraska Iowa. Well, here goes Washington <laughs> running game. Search. Got to shoot. We got to shoot out with Utah and Washington. My kid is so spoiled. He gets two birthday dinners. So he and the bunny and the fam damley are rolling down here to the single barrel. And I'm going to uh, um, probably uh, look at a steak and, 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 you know, eat some cucumber or something to get back on this diet. <laughs> it was a bad monkey last night. Uh, uh, Elijah, here, be- before we get out, a final thought. Plus that was eight. 15 minutes ago. I love it. <laughs> what, Cran- is Cranach back on the show? <laughs> it's a Saturday How about wrestling? session. It's a, yeah, it I, I said it earlier in the show, but Husker Nation, if you're, if you're the religious type, go to church tomorrow. Send some prayers up. Jesus Christ, I've been covering this team for five years now. They haven't made a, a bowl game since I was in high school. I don't want to hear it, brother. Uh, I, I Bill, don't, I don't, Bill and I have been, I don't Bill and I've been doing this thing since Frank got – you know the Joe Pesci treatment in Goodfellas. <laughs> I don't. I don't root. I don't root. I really don't. I, I know some people out there might think we root. We don't root. But damn it, I am sick and tired of watching this team lose games and me not being able to go to bowl games. I say that selfishly. I want to see a bowl game. <laughs> I want to see a winning team. It's a hell of a lot more fun to hop on a reaction show after a win. We got more comments coming in. <laughs> Why end the show Brennan. now? Oh, hold on. Brennan's got a good comment. Uh, betting the Enders on Iowa the last two years requires a W-9 and comes with PTO. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's good. <laughs> it's a job. <laughs> It's got full that's retirement. Uh, that's good. Uh, Phil says no prayers for this team. <laughs> uh, everybody have a good weekend. Hug your loved ones. Have a steak. Have a beer. Take a breath. Uh, Drink responsibly the, tonight. Yes. Uh, rule and the crew will get it figured out. That's a no on the Madison road trip, Elijah. Today sealed it. Talk to me on Monday. We'll throw something on the smoker. Listen to us Monday. Hail Varsity back at you at 4. And, uh, again, the Hail Varsity YouTube channel. Subscribe to that. The Real Red Reaction YouTube channel. Give us a follow on the Hail Varsity Radio Twitter. Spotify, iTunes, Google Play for Hail Varsity Radio. Bill Dolman at Bill Dolman. And uh, Elijah Herbal at Herbal Essence at Schmidt underscore radio for me on Twitter. And uh, we'll do a Monday pod on the Average Joe Sports Show podcast we want you to catch that with mitch sherman bill dolman elijah herbal myself so uh different ways to hear us uh across uh your podcast platform take care enjoy uh your saturday and uh hunker down for some other college football talk to you soon